Yeah, cool. yeah. Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to the next Eris. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of Heresy Hammer. Um, today, we've got myself, Metas Miniatures, Rob uh, on, and we've also got Lee at death from the shadows as well. Nice treat to see uh, Lee. His, his kids have gone to school now, so he has a bit of time during the day to be able to, to do some hobby and, and record. But um, he really <laughs> wants to be doing a hobby, but he's stuck with me actually recording. <laughs> Um, the show, and it's a um, I could, we're going to be talking about Libra Imperialis, aren't we? Uh, today, Lee, which we is are, yeah. well, uh, more about that in a second, but just to say thank you to our sponsors. So, uh, Battle Bling, uh, Johnny over at Battle Bling, um, is a great supporter of uh, Meta's Miniatures and everything that I do, but also he started to support uh, Heresy Hammer as well. You can find a affiliate link down below. And it's very pertinent that we're talking about Battle Bling today because he does all things uh, 3D prints for things like Depths of Titanicus. We know that there's an awful lot of stuff coming uh, for um, uh, Epic 30K as well. So keep an eye on those guys' socials. Uh, there's lots of exciting stuff coming. And we've seen lots of those exciting things already, haven't we, Lee? Uh, which is yeah. pretty Quite cool. And I think he's sending you a, a care package. Is your care package arrived? Yeah, yeah, I've received Add. it. Yeah, it's full of goodies. So, cool. yeah, cool. I need that. Um, let's go to the uh, next slide. Just say thank you to uh, Bits Monster, where you can find uh, all of your um, bits for heresy. If you want to find sprues and things like that, this is the place to go. And we also offer a 10% discount. And there's free shipping, over 25 quid. Uh, and Finally, for the, the start of the show, we've also got Cryptic Cabin as well, which is a, a local hobby store to me. Uh, and Paul used to be a presenter on the show before he was axed. Uh, axed from the show. No, <laughs> it, it, was, it, was a, it, it was me and Shrive, right? Um, uh, so Cryptic Cabin are a great supporter of all fellow hobbyists locally and uh, nationally uh, as well. Um, they do lots of sport competitions, um, but also they're a great game store um, and I have frequented there often. But they wanted us to shout out uh, an event that they've got coming a horace heresy event so mm -hmm. if you are local or are in the uk and you've got sunday the 22nd uh three uh, of october then make sure you go and head over um to their event they've got i think they've sold about half the tickets or there are only a few tickets left um so if you and it's only one day as well so it's not like you've got the whole weekend uh to take out so the format and things like that are on their website if you just go to the events tab on their website you will be able to go and see uh, what that event is about i've been to one of their heresy uh events before and it's enormous fun uh two or three games of uh, gaming on a sunday what more could you uh what more could you um want uh what's that on the next slide Lee? i think this is what, what we're oh. talking about isn't it so oh. In the show today, we are talking about all things Epic 30K. Now, it's not actually called Epic 30K, is it? What What's the, the official name for it, Lee? Oh, I don't know. Libra, <laughs> Libra, Libra Imperialis, is that what it's called? Legions Imperialis. Legions Imperialis, right. I'm getting confused between like Libra and Legions and the Libra Legions. And the, and the books like Otherwise that. known as Epic 30K. <laughs> now, we will obviously go into loads of detail. In fact, we're, this is like the origin story of Epic, right, as well. We're going to talk about the melange and backstory. Um, but uh, what we will say is that Lee is particularly excited about this uh, about this release. And I think uh, it's fair to say, Lee, that you're the most excited about this release uh, so. that I've ever seen you be excited about anything in like <laughs> 10 years of, of knowing you. This is, this is one. So if, it, if it's got Lee excited, then it must be good. And then Hopefully some of that excitement can uh, rub off on me. I um, really like particularly the tank models that we've seen. Um, I, of course, like Tiny Titans. But, um, yeah, it'd be great to go through. I've not really paid too much attention, so it'd be great for you, Lee, to um, tell me what's what with the uh, with the, the new Epic 30K. Um, let's head on over to Heresy Hammer. Now, Lee chose these ones. Um, and um, we've got a few people that we've seen before and a couple of people that we haven't as well. So we've got uh, WHAD underscore Ollie, who's got a really cool um, Imperial Fist uh, kind of conversion here. I'm assuming, well, I kind of think this is kind of like a, maybe a converted Fafnir Rand maybe, um, but uh, it's, it's the Breacher console sergeant of some some kind, but it looks absolutely awesome, doesn't it? It looks like- Yeah, I think the, the actual model is one of the, um... What do you call it? Nurgle 40k. Right. Yeah, yeah, Nurgle yeah. Ones, yeah, I look, yeah. I could be completely wrong there, but he, he looks fucking brutal, doesn't he? 
it looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I love the mohawk. I love the whole vibe, and I also I think love the the dynamics of the posing as well. I think that yeah. it's really yeah, just absolutely brilliant. Uh, we've got Astartes underscore console. He's done a really cool uh, looking uh, rhino with some really subtle kind of like weathering here. Loving the transfers and the battle damage on the transfers as well. Absolutely brilliant. Havoc launcher. Don't see a lot of havoc. Is it that is a havoc launcher? Isn't it? Is that the is yeah, that yeah, the, yeah. The, yeah, yeah, that's the the, the the newish, not so new now. Haven't yeah, mentioned. yeah. Um, so an absolutely awesome uh, looking rider. What's what have we got next, uh, Lee? Oh, look uh, at that. Yeah, so I, we saw this army or pictures of this army because it, it's uh, our friend Adam who's been on the show, friend of the show, Adam. He hosted <laughs> Preferred Enemy, which is an event in 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 Melbourne that he runs. Um, and um, Preteres took his army uh, there. I think he won actually. Best uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, best army. Uh, rightly so, really well deserved because it is an absolutely fantastic. Uh, this this picture here. So I was going to choose one of his tanks. He's done some fucking amazing tanks, but this picture here to me is like this could be the cover of a Horace Heresy novel. You know how the original novels were always like pictures of like massed infantry. Like running at a wall or something like yeah. this. This picture here could just be like, um, yeah, the 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 front page of a novel. Like, the fucking... yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. good. Yeah, and each one, I think, what one thing I would say about this is each one is <clears throat> kind of individualized, isn't it? Right, like yeah. each one is a little, yeah, yeah. and even from shoulder pads and things like that. So, and it's funny because that's the sort of thing that usually makes my OCD twitch. But yeah. I actually love it with these. Like, it gives them yeah. so much. Yeah, that's it. That's interesting. But what what so what is similar about all of them is they all have one white shoulder pad. Uh, but yeah. what is but each one is also different. So there's uniformity, but there's also differences between each one, which is yeah, just interesting. Um, cool. Right. Let's have a look at the uh, next two that you've chosen for us, Lee. So, Lee, why don't you talk about uh, talk about these two? Uh, so, choose Hammer Forty K. Um, I I kind of chose this one really. <clears throat> excuse me because he's done a really good job of basically just taking the standard mark six dude and showing what you can do with it yeah and, you know he's not even changed the backpack he's just stuck a couple of bits on and stuck a different arm on and all of a sudden you've got yourself um an apothecary uh, yes. and i think it looks fucking awesome as well yeah. like he's done a really good job the black's brilliant um using almost kind of it's blues isn't it highlights yeah, uh, yeah. But I just think, yeah, like using essentially a basic model, but adding a few bits, he's done a really good uh, kit bash there. And yeah, then pretty... fucking awesome job painting. Yeah. And um, I can't actually see who did this because I've got a big box. Uh, tabletop Tamo. Um, so again, I really love, you don't see uh, uh, this model converted much, really, no. do you? No. Um, um and I think, again, it just goes to show uh, a really cool idea of using a well-known model and then just completely changing its purpose. Um, yeah. And it looks brutal as fuck. Yeah. Um, I really like the choice of the, the uh, <coughs> excuse me, the, the head as well. Because, you know, typically when you see it, you're like, oh, that's a white scars. Uh, head right but actually it's mm -hmm. perfect for like the top knot for a for a yeah, yeah, yeah. Leisure, I, think. I think it's brilliant um yeah it's it's really savage as far as this yeah and and again another uh awesome paint job but yeah i just love i love the fucking model it's fucking brilliant awesome conversion he's done a great job well done you guys some of the top tamo is doing some ultras at the moment as well so definitely worth mm -hmm. giving him a follow if you don't follow him already he's got loads of armies uh on the tabletop. Uh, right, let's have a look at uh, what's up next. I think, I think we're going to Heresy Thursday. So we've got loads to cover here. So we'll do a whistle stop tour um, and what our thoughts are. And then I think that um, I will talk about the box kind of in more detail in another show. There's, there's episodes that I'd like to do. So we've got obviously this new plastic radio coming. It's coming as part of a uh, probably wrong to say starter box. I think a starter box is kind of, it has instructions in, um, but it's coming as part of a kind of army box that we can buy. Awesome. And then presumably at some point, a couple of months down the road beyond that, we'll be able to buy these 
individually. Um, it looks to me like it's going to be an auto cannon set and the plasma set. Is that right in one box? And then I assume yeah. you're going to be able to buy the last cannons and the and the ball kite in a, in a, in another box. Um, I'd imagine. So, yeah. I have been on the receiving end of the plasma. That they are really quite good really really good my friend tom runs those um and i think that like all things uh, a bit of marmite with the radio rather like them or you hate them uh, but i really think a great choice for this plastic sculpt was having the detailing on the on that kind of like the 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 the, the torso of the dread because that's often an empty dead space and it's awkward to do transfers on because it's often difficult to level those out equally yeah. because just because of the shape so having that symmetrical um uh element to it uh those detailings i think that works really really well for that radio. i think it's a real improvement on the resin yeah any, agreed. any more thoughts, thoughts on that no 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 i mean it, it's it's a radio isn't it um uh, but the paint job i think is great uh, uh particularly yeah. the plasma so absolutely brilliant to, to see this that's good cool let's see what's next because we've got loads of loads of this so yeah I mean, we could talk about this for a while, and I think that we should dedicate, as I say, a dedicated show to the new box set. Um, but I think a real... Uh, so this is a real hit for me. I saw a few people yeah. whining about it, but I think that it's a good upgrade. It's different. Uh, I think the poses are better. The, the proportions are better. Um, some people will prefer the old resin one. Some people prefer the plastic one. I think we just need to accept that change is here to update it with a general style that we kind of uh of this second edition this almost like new heresy era we're in but i like it i like it a lot yeah, yeah i'm i'm a big fan of these i like yeah. them i think um uh, one thing i would like to say uh just to add is that the command sprue that the mark six comes with um i think what's an interesting design choice that they've taken is that the command sprue you know the one with the power fist and the plasma pistol yeah, yeah. sort of it's the same sprue that we're going to get in the Mark III box. So you can see there, yeah. the Power Fist is the same. The Plasma Pistol is the same. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, it's super interesting um, that they've decided to make make that choice. So if we see a Mark IV kit ever in the future, you, yeah, we might expect to see that sprue. And then um, the other thing I think is interesting, so with this box, um, there are going to be special weapons in, as in guns like Volkites and things like that. And... I'll be interested to see what they do about the arms with those because at the moment the Mark VI upgrade weapons come with uh, Mark VI arms. Oh, okay. So what happens about those? Whether we'll see a reboxing, yeah. so there'll be like a Mark III weapons oh, kit yeah. and a Mark VI weapons kit will be uh, will be interesting. Seems to see like a, that seems like a bit of an oversight, really, doesn't it? You'd think yeah. you'd have just got. I don't know. I I, th I think there'll be additional sprues for these arms for those special weapons in the in the box. I think so. We'll have Mark three 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 arms, but who who knows? Like, uh, what what will happen? But I think this is a real this is a real hit for me. I really like it. Um, yeah, I really like it a lot. Good. Yeah, I'm a I'm a big fan. Um, I I think my my only thing, and it's just me, is I'd probably cut off those little pointy bits on top of the helmets. Yeah, they're super Prussian Bismarckian. Yeah, it's a bit World War One for me, but I don't hate them. But I just, I, yeah. I wouldn't. I think I wouldn't it goes, have. it it goes back to an art style that we saw, yeah. like that Blanchard Visions of Heresy. But if you don't like yeah. it, they come off yeah. easy, easily um, enough. No, I like these a lot. I love the plumed helmet though. I think the plumed helmet is great. Yeah, yeah. fucking brilliant. Yeah. Um, oh, and this. Oh, actually, yeah. Sorry, sorry, oh. sorry. sorry. Um, yeah, so this is this is what they will be coming out with initially, I think, isn't it? They'll be coming out as the battle group. Yeah. So I think, in fact, you probably would be able to zoom in on this pick if you have the the actual HD version and see what's uh, what. Yeah. It looked like Mark Three Arms to me, so I think we're probably safe on that one. Uh, what I would love to do, well, I mean, people have seen this loads, right? I think this is a great. I reckon it's going to be around the hundred uh, and twenty pound mark. I think that's probably sensible. Um, mm. I think that everyone's going to have at least one of these in their armies as a result of just the fact that it would be super good value. Um, but what I would like to do a show on the is, could you make an army with two of these boxes and plus a no, H? Right. That, yeah, cool. like, what army lists could we create for what legions if you just bought two of these boxes and could you create an army for it? So that's my, my mission. But yeah, it, it, it's a great looking force, right? I think. 
I think it's fucking brilliant. And and I have to say, like, um, I was starting to get a little bit fed up with the constant Mark VI releases. Um, you know, I, there, there has been a lot of, wow, wow, Mark VI wasn't readily available in the heresy. And I, I wasn't that, you know, I wasn't that bothered about it. Like, it's just fucking toy soldiers. But it is nice to finally have something else that isn't got tiny little legs because people keep banging on about the old mark three but i think they look a bit derpy now they've they got tiny little legs yeah. and just look out of place yeah. um so yeah i'm a big fan of these and i am a big fan that they are moving away well, well not moving away but bringing in something else that isn't isn't mark six that fits other legions because mark six iron warriors really you know if that's your thing then fine i'm not going to get upset about it but for me personally i i i it doesn't work like uh iron hands there's some legions that i think just fit this aesthetic much better yeah yeah 100 um, percent. yeah i but, yeah. agree agree that yeah we, i think that there's a desensitization as well to say like endless mark six you know if you see lots of consoles in mark six like whether you like them or not you get desensitized to it over time. Yeah. And so yeah. having this new kind of fresh thing, like, whoa, okay, this is quite exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll get on to that later. <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's have a look at the next one. Uh, ooh. Yeah. So this was revealed at Nova. It's been, so, yeah, this was uh, some time ago. So it's been a while since it's done a show. So I think good points. Uh, amazing sculpt. Amazing paint job. Um, it, it says it for me really encapsulates that kind of like that that um uh Fulgrim transfigured without it bordering on really blocky like almost like magnus in 40k you know kind yeah. of like, you know there, there's no finesse to it whereas this because it's in re resin is finesse to fuck like it really feels like a piece of art it's brilliant uh but the negative i say is because it's in resin it, it's yeah. going to be you're going to you're going to break the fingers you're going to break fingernails trying to play with the wings i yeah. think it's going to be uh, a, a nightmare right i think i think yeah this is a fucking amazing model i absolutely love it but i think there's a fine line between having a display piece and having a gaming piece yeah and i think this has crossed the line well and truly into display piece because like just those wings the wings themselves and then the little like claw bits on the wings yeah the uh the spear looks like it's just waiting to get fucking snapped off like it's a fucking brilliant model but yeah i do it's it's a, it's the thing is that no matter what we say i mean no matter how we say about the the design in plastics as well there are things that you just can't do in plastics that you can yeah. do in resin. and this is why this looks so good as a model but you know i think even if you're if you're a gamer and purely gaming uh you know you might want to consider removing the wings and just playing with with the actual body because i think that you'll have less accidents that way yeah. um but i if you're a display painter you know obviously have the have the whole thing but i just think transporting it playing it even painting it, I think I can really see one of those fingernails just coming off, you know, because you accidentally, uh, you know, knock it. But you think, like, when you're playing a game, you're moving stuff, you're stood over a table, you're moving stuff, your hands and arms are moving over the table. Yeah. And you're always yeah. knocking things, aren't you? Fuck, I knock little tiny marine yeah. dude. So yeah. this thing is just waiting to get absolutely smashed I, off. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, yeah. I think the best thing, though, that I saw was all, like, 40k players crying because the article basically said let's rip off the band no now there will not be rules for this uh, <laughs> in, in 40k and so it was just yeah. like loads of power space marine and infrastructure players crying i was like just come to horace heresy just come play horace yeah. heresy we can play i mean i feel like he will get a 40k version at some point they should, uh, they yeah, should yeah. Be doing it, don't they? so and people will play play with that one maybe have this one for display room uh, that's it yeah exactly but yeah it's quite funny um hearing yeah. 40k players cry awesome uh awesome new model and so i think we've got a few rules for him as well uh, yeah well yeah yeah so, so yeah so he well, let's talk about him just first of all then we'll talk about the book so he we found out from the article that he's going to be 600 points hmm, so yeah. unlike horace you can actually play him in a 3000 <laughs> horace yeah. said it, 
you've got to play him for 4,000 points or, or no dice. Um, and we got a few kind of rules. Now, we don't know whether he's going to be have any psychic ability. You would have thought that he may have some kind of psychic ability, um, but perhaps not. Depends, depends where they go. But we did get some stats for him. Um, the stats were fairly like, eh, okay, yeah, that's fine. It seems all pretty reasonable. Um, I think that the movement nine is not necessarily... I think that, obviously, he's got demonic pinions. So they'll be like uh, like a piece of war gear. He'll be able to like move 14 or 16 or whatever. Mm-hmm. But that will be built into his war gear rather than into his movement characteristic. I imagine it'll be something like Argyll Tal has with his... Um... Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So whether he can or can't join uh, units will be interesting uh, because I, undoubtedly he's going to have like the demon or the corrupted rule, right? So that would be interesting. I'll come back onto the example of battles in a minute. But we did get um, some interesting uh, rules for him. So basically he's got multiple weapons. It looks like he can do, or he might be able to do weapon mastery so he can chop and change between them. So he's got his cap tank slashes, which is uh, strength 7, AP2, or strength user AP2, so because we don't know whether he's going to have uh, like Furious Charge or something like that, uh, melee and murder strike for up. But the really interesting one was the Sunnery Blows, uh, which are amazing because they go, they're basically strength 10, AP1, brutal 2, uh, unwieldy, and wrathful blows. But wrathful blows, you're only allowed three attacks max. You you can't have, yeah. you can't put all your attacks into the, into the Sunnery Blows. Um, yeah. speak well. so that kind of leads us to deduce that he might be I might have weapon mastery basically um, and because he's a Emperor's Children and will if he charges he'll be able to go at initiative 2 with those Sundering Sundering Blows attack which is pretty good um, that leads us though to these Emperor battles so I had no idea this was coming not even an inkling no. that this was coming yeah so, no, they kept this one quite yeah so and it says volume 1 so we undoubtedly will get a volume 2 and maybe more but basically, they are updating uh, mm-hmm. and putting in a number of exemplary battle uh, units into a formal, formalized book. Some of those will be updated to bring them in line with, I guess, like current meta or just to give them uh, a refresh. Sounds like there's going to be lots of images and pictures of what we had in the exemplary battle articles uh, in there and presumably the missions as well. Uh, I think I heard uh, salamanders were going to be in there maybe oh. Raven Guard off the top of my head. Um, but the really interesting thing, I think, for Empress Children players is that it looks like they're getting some kind of update to their army list um, to, in line with this new Fulgrim Transfigures, which is going to, I assume, allow them to be more corrupted to show their their path further down the, the heresy. And if, if I think that we can assume that if Fulgrim has the demon or corrupted special rule, you're probably going to be able to buy that for... Uh, Empress Children units in a way, similar way that you can for word bearers, um, yeah. bearers models, right? Which is kind of, you know, so you can attach him to assault. Oh, yeah. I'm mega excited about that. I really want to see some fucking messed up Empress Children's armies with, you know, mouths stitched open and, you know, all sorts of uh Nancy things that Empress Children got up to. Um, because I mean, Fulcrum transfigured fairly early on in the heresy, didn't was he? Yeah. He must have been he, one he of was the... In the Angel Exterminatus, so and that's a relatively early book, yeah. So it's not like you know, oh, it's Siege of Terror stuff. This this kind of happened, well, yeah. um, whilst they were scrapping still before they got to Terror. So, um, yeah, I'm mega excited to see uh, what people yeah. come up, yeah. And that's a good point because actually, you know, the <laughs> They really began to be corrupted in the Fulgur book, which is book five in the series, right? Which is yeah. Like, well, there's, 50 there's the classic there. scene of of I think I mentioned it before on the show, which I fucking love, of the two Iron Warriors that get sent over to the Empress Children <laughs> ship, <laughs> and they're just in like this deranged nightclub, and one of them like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know, like snorting cocaine off of Davinette's <laughs> ass. <laughs> and the other one's like, "What are you doing, brother?" <laughs> it's just like, yeah, like, yeah. Like, I definitely, yeah, should be more short novels about the uh, the <laughs> missing nightclubs of the Empress Children. Which <laughs> went to, right? Yeah, um, I, I do, yeah, really. So, sorry, yeah, sorry. But. I do feel like Empress Children is one of the kind of a little bit unloved. They haven't had anything really since, yeah, 
they had uh, super early models basically, and then they yeah, weren't they're... really touched again. Yeah. No, uh, and I mean their models are amazing, but they are dated now, aren't they? They are very dated. Um, and I was listening to someone else talk, and I can't remember what it was. And I think 40k is meant to be getting an update to the Empress Children, a bit like the World Eaters has had. Yeah, I can imagine that. So it'd be interesting to see if they're not too derpy, what 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 could be done with that if that ever comes out. So yeah, I think I think when this book comes out, it, it'll be huge for Empress Children players. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing a load more um, gotcha. armies start popping up, like because yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I think that if they don't, because what they're not great at, I think, is harmonizing releases with 30k and 40k at the same time. No, no. And um, the exception might be something like the Custodies rules, where they basically did models for both at, at, at the same time. Um, what I, um, so I think that if Empress Children players want to do a super kind of um, messed up, hedonistic legion i think that 3d printing might be the way to go i think that probably there's a ton of files that you'd be able to get um, I, i'd like to see a fog uh, a eidolon like a eidolon transfigured uh oh, okay. model that i think that'd be really really cool because yeah, his model's yeah. fantastic but it's definitely like an isfam three style model right again yeah i i love the whole empress children range um like they're fucking brilliant but yeah they they are um they are crusade era models the way i look at them they're not they're not heresy era models they are kind of very early heresy um or crusade era uh models so yeah but i wonder if the, i think the trouble is if they released like a 40k empress children models and then released rules for 30k i think they'd probably struggle to knock all the models out you know how they're, they're pretty bad at selling out of everything straight away aren't they so i wonder if if they try and purposely do it um yeah i, I don't know but um it'll be interesting to see i have heard rumors for a while now that 40k are meant to be getting an update to the empress children models yeah um, yeah interesting. i would love to see some real kind of down the rabbit hole empress children armies we've seen a few out there haven't we there's been a few uh few conversion uh just take loads of effort that's the pro i think that's the problem yeah but that is the trouble yeah it takes you a lot need, of love and a lot of effort to do, to do this and thing. you need to be good at green stuff in and yeah. all that bollocks so yeah <laughs> but yeah, fucking awesome awesome let's have a look what's next because we've got a couple couple more bits so um as uh, rather serendipitously um uh, we did a tactical show the one before last which was all about knights um, and John took us through kind of uh, how to take knights in a legion list and all of the household ranks that you can take. Uh, and then this drops. So the Battle of Fairweather Keep basically unlocks um, Chaos Knights. Um, that's probably not the, the the right way to describe it, but essentially corrupted knight households. Yeah. And then the corrupted household ranks to go alongside those. So I, I have no doubt, actually, probably this month, our second tactical show will probably be going through this exemplary battle uh, document and saying, you know, which ones we think is best, which one we get most use out of, because I think that when we did the one about the household ranks, in general, they're all pretty good. But for there were three that stood out to us that we went, okay, these are the best and these are the reason why. So it'll be interesting to go down the route of doing uh, that with the corrupted, uh, the corrupted, corrupted knights. So, but a really, really nice touch, I thought, uh, and really great to see, you know, we've had, a, you know, uh, We've been really lucky, I think, in the past month around the amount of like releases and new stuff that we've we've had coming up. So yeah, re really great to see. I think uh, it again. This was another another kind of out of nowhere thing, really, wasn't it? Um, yeah, it was nice. Yeah, it's just like they they've just knock out some rules. PDF keeps people happy, and yeah. you can add more more models. Yeah, uh, or conversions uh, to your armies. So it's fucking win win, really, isn't it? Yeah, and you can use the the forty k. Um, Chaos Knights, yeah. which has got a whole range, and like yeah. some, of the, some of the bigger knights are really cool, actually, like spikes all over them and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good conversion uh, opportunities, or you know, just going down the route of um, just getting the 40k plastics. Yeah, they're really good. Cool. Let's have a look uh, at what's next. Here he is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, so oh, what's, what's, what's good? 
Right. Okay. So what's good about it? So for me, um, I really like the bear head. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. And I really like the bottom half of this model. I think the legs are stylized in a way that matches it with the new Mark III. Um, mm. And it's kind of like an ornate version of the new Mark III. Where this starts to go wrong for me um, is around the torso and the backpack. So I think that this is a criticism that a couple of people have made, um, which is that it basically, it looks like that meme where somebody said, oh, can I copy your homework? But yeah, don't make it look like, like, you know, <laughs> it's like somebody wanted to create a, 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 a space marine from a third party company, but they said, we've just got to change it enough to look like so we don't get we don't get we don't get slaps by gw <laughs> um because the the backpack is quite like sci-fi megatron transformer infinity style the chest is is like like that right and i i, I yeah. felt it was a little out of place for um so when i saying? when i first saw this my first thought was it looks like uh, one of the new Mark III Marines has had a love child with a Transformer <laughs> and and they've shut this out because it's just I don't know like it's it's a it's it's just a weird aesthetic isn't it it's not really I don't know like I because I like the new Mark III but I don't like this but I just think they've gone over the top with like the plates on the front it all just looks it looks like transformers it all looks like it's gonna move and yeah <laughs> that, that's exactly that's a uh, uh, friend tom said made a good point when this came out and he said that basically one of the aesthetics they seem to be doing is that in order to make artificial armor they just bolt on more plates to more plates to more plates yeah. whereas actually sometimes flatter more like panels with less stuff on a great opportunity to put transfers and things like that on um, and I think exactly as you say, basically, it just feels like this. This it, it, it's going to transform into a car at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Fucking yeah. drive onto the battlefield. <laughs> like, yeah, and it, it was it was a real it was, it was a bit of a mess for me. I think that had they painted it up maybe in Iron Warriors colours, I I might feel differently. Um, so if I was going to use this model, I'd I'd change that helmet. I don't think the helmet's that horrendous. I think the black bit in the middle makes it look worse than what it is. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I would scrape off these Sigma Riot symbols. I don't even know what what they're meant to be. Like it, it looks like something from Major Sigma. Yeah. Um, I'd get rid of all of that. I'd change the head. I'd probably scrape off the panels on the front. Of his chest, yeah, and I'd use it as as like a warsmith or a forge lord or something like that. This doesn't scream champion to me. This screams tech marine. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. because of the plates, right? Yeah, I, and again, yeah, it's just like it is what it is, isn't it? You know, although like, although some people for, like looking at sort of social media, people some people are like this is the best model. That they produced in ages, yeah. like it really, really cut through. Uh, you know, and was just like you're either one side or the other on this. On this, it was really interesting to see because some people absolutely loved it. No, some people... I, uh, I do try to hold judgment until I've seen a model in the flesh. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I have with this one. I've gone straight in. This is fucking <laughs> shit. <laughs> uh, a lot of the time, when you see it in the flesh, you're actually. Like, to be honest, I think one of the things that's most galling for me is those symbols. I just don't understand what the fuck they're meant to be. It's yeah. Sometimes it looks is... like meteorites. It looks like something from Age of Sigma. It really does, and I, I just don't think it's almost like oh, it's artificial armor. We have to just add things. Yeah. Sometimes just adding things doesn't actually look good. Yeah, like. Parts, parts yeah, um, interesting. It's the same way I feel about trim on trim on stuff. Actually, I'm just like you don't necessarily need to have trim on everything to show that it's really they're really fancy. But but this is the thing as well, isn't it? Every single little additional bit of armor panel has got trim on it. Like yeah. like that bit on the chest. I just it 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 literally looks like it's it's just like protect me more. Right, I'll drill another bit on. Right, protect me even more. Right, I'll drill another bit on. <laughs> Run out of bits Space to drill Marines. on. Right. Base Marines in disguise. <laughs> Ice marine trons. Uh, cool. Okay. Well, we've talked about this enough. 
but that's that is our that is our honest opinion on it. <laughs> it's, it's half transformer, half space mate. After, yeah, combined with a little dash of um, a sig uh, 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 sigma. <laughs> <laughs> cool okay uh and finally these so we talked so we have talked about these before um because we sure saw some flashes but the big news is that these will be available to order uh on saturday it's now the 18th as we're filming this 18th of september um and this will be these will be available this coming saturday uh i think we can just assume that they're going to be the same price 120 pound um yeah but, no, um, so. you can get them from yeah crypto cabin bits monster wherever you want to go uh for, mm -hmm. for 95 quid 100 quid or whatever whatever it might be um it they're, they're plastic knives right what's not to love about them uh and it. yeah they're great oh. and yeah. you know this this does not suffer from the problem of uh fulgrim which is you know because it's plastic you can put it together with plastic glue you literally bounce this off a wall it'll probably yeah. relatively stay in don't try that people don't be like oh what because <laughs> it probably will smash to a thousand pieces um, <laughs> but they, they all look great it's been great to see people with their plastic knives and i haven't seen a whole load on online but no, it's been great. Just, i'll be honest the main ones i saw were people that have been given them and most of them looked a bit shit if i'm totally honest so yeah. it'll be nice yeah. to see people yeah actually getting amongst them and giving them some love yeah, but if you are somebody who wants to, um, you know, get uh, is thinking about getting a knight, it's a great modeling opportunity. And if you're not sure which knight to get, have a look at our Tactica, our most recent Tactica by joining our Patreon for as little as three pound uh, a month. And we give uh, we did an hour and a, I think an hour, an hour and a half show on knights, um, where we really delved into each of the household ranks and how it could be uh, useful. But I think that basically, I think people are waiting for the sword because the sword is the best knight basically yeah, yeah pretty much yeah unfortunately but yeah. yeah yeah cool 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 right uh so is that does that take us to the main part of the show i think it does perfect okay well let's uh let's take a break here uh let's have a cheeky little advert from crypto cabin and when we come back we'll be talking all things horus heresy 30k business imperialis adeptus titanicus and uh charting back into the depths and mists of time when lee was a young boy and starting out is the Warhammer uh, career as well. So uh, join us, join us, uh, join us for that. Right, welcome, uh, welcome back, everybody. So we're going to be handing over to Lee now. He's going to take us through Legion's Imperials. But I think really you're going to give us a, a bit of a history lesson for all those who don't know much about um, about this. And certainly, this is. I think I'm going to learn a lot in this process as well because um, I, I am no no expert on on um, Epic and um, its backstory. So yeah, take it away for us, Lee. So yeah, so we'll talk a bit about the origins of of uh epic and kind of how it started a bit like i'd like to just start off by saying i'm certainly no expert um i owned space marine back in the day uh but never really played it properly it was kind of like that kiddie thing of uh had the rules but didn't really know what half of them fucking did uh but i have always had a soft spot for epic in my heart and as soon as I heard that Legion of Imperials was coming out, I fucking collapsed because my stiffy was that hard. <laughs> Lack of blood to your brain, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I like to say that, but yeah, probably not. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was mega excited. So this is something that I am I am super excited for. Um, and then, yeah, we'll have a little look. Uh, obviously, basically, I've just summarised most of the... Uh, Warhammer community articles so we'll talk a little bit about the rules excuse me um but there's a lot we don't know about and I I'm not a big fan of second guessing things because people get angry about stuff and it's like but we've literally been given a snippet of a rule book like let's not jump to um conclusions um and yeah we'll just talk a bit about what what the game is and and cool. Uh, how it should work. Uh, one of the things, that, just to just to interrupt, one of the things you were saying to me previously was that 
one of the reasons that you really liked the idea of Legions Imperialis for the AK is because the game at the moment, yeah, 3K versus 3K, doesn't encapsulate for you the size or scale of the, the conflicts for, for the Horus Heresy. But you yeah. were saying to me that actually you felt that Legions Imperialis is a much better medium to be able to demonstrate these conflicts that you find on a vast scale. So, you know, giant tank battles at Talon, you know, well, on a on a normal 28 millimeter game, you could have like 10 tanks against another 10 tanks, but it would be a small representation of the Battle of Town. But with I'm, Legions I'm, Imperialis, you, like it's it's a you can it, 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 it's a much better representation yeah. uh, of, of the battles it's, we find exactly that, exactly that. So so 10 tanks in in this game is is almost like a detachment so that would be a unit whereas in age of darkness that is a full game that's so awesome. that's kind of how that i mean we'll get into it in a bit but yeah that, that that's that's kind of uh uh what i really love about it. it it's it's a combined arms game like you really are going to see people using planes and titans and knights and tanks and infantry uh Whereas Age of Darkness, how often do you, you might get a knight or you might get, you know, a Lord of War or, you know, someone brings a Titan and everyone's like, oh, my God, he brought a Titan. Ugh. It's just going to sit there and not do anything. Whereas of this, like, they're going to be moving about and shooting stuff. Yeah. And um, it's it's just a different game. Like, yeah. it's obviously smaller scale and you can, in my eyes, do those bigger battles that you kind of read about in the books and like you say talon is a prime example because that's exactly what i'm going to base my force on is going to be iron warriors talents um because it makes me hard driving silver men around fucking irradiated wastelands murdering civilians awesome. and then getting beaten up and having to run away <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> should we get into it? Yeah. yeah, you, it, yeah. No, you weren't particularly interested, and then I battered uh, you. I think that, but ba ba I mean, basically, so just to let you guys behind the curtain, we had a uh, a meeting with uh, probably about an hour and a half meeting with Johnny from Battle Bling the other day, um, and um, I, I I I I went into it open minded. Um, it, I think for me the excitement probably is the tanks and the um, uh, and the uh, and the titans. I, I really like that mainly because they're just a bigger, you know, canvas to be able to paint on and be more creative. I think that yeah. where I probably would I have less interest is just more infantry. I think right. though what I would say is that you could probably get a um, a, a decent tabletop standard uh, of a force uh, over a weekend. Like you could do that with contrast paints, with an airbrush, with a rattle cam. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you, there isn't going to be much contrast on these, so you don't really need an airbrush. You know, if you find a rattle cam from Game Color that fits the Sons of Horus, you, you know, style, then just paint stripes on here and there, and a few black shoulder pads. That that will be enough. Um, hmm. So yeah, I, I I but we had a meeting with Johnny, and um, I was pretty pumped because of the things that we're planning to organize a, a, a around that we won't say again too much but we, we've got we've got plans in the plans in the works yeah cool right let's get into it then uh so what is it oh, you know i've got boxes everywhere I, can't, I didn't think about this when i made this powerpoint um so for those that are unaware if you've been living under a rock uh it is a new game that's coming using the epic scale which will roughly be uh, eight millimeters. Um, it's set during the Horus Heresy, which upset a few people. Um, but I'm not really sure why. When we get into the origins of the game, it started as Horus Heresy. So, it, it, yeah, it is what it is. Um, and I think when we get into it, it will kind of make sense why they've done it. Um, but yeah, units are basically detachments, and then you'll you'll give each detachment uh, orders. Uh, and then the biggest difference with this game is uh, alternative activation. So one player goes, and the next player goes, which you don't see in, I don't think, any other Warhammer system. 
Not that I can think of. Maybe yeah, one of these no, Warcry or something. But none of their major games use use alternative. Lord of the, Lord of the Rings uh, have alternating systems. I, to, to be honest, I, I have not. No, I honestly don't know. Maybe. Um, which I'm a big fan of. Uh, and yeah, it's it's small models, so you field huge armies. So you'll field infantry, tanks, flyers, knights, titans, fucking everything you can think of. Um, and one thing they've said is that the primary goal of the missions will involve kind of uh, capturing objectives, um, which is why you will need all those tiny little infantry that Rob doesn't want to paint. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and the picture on the side gives you a, a, a rough idea of the scale. It's basically a quarter of the uh, Age of Darkness miniatures is is pretty much the scale uh, you're looking at. Um, okay, so way back when, 1988. How old were you in 1988, Robert? I was, I was one year old. One year old, this game came out. It's not too bad, is it? <laughs> um, I was seven, so not too bad. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, 1988, uh, they released Adeptus Titanicus, which was a uh, a box set uh, allowing players to play Titan versus Titan games. Uh, the scale was roughly six millimeter, and I say roughly because in the olden days, uh, the scales were all over the place. So right. they've got a handle on the scales now um but because everything was made pretty much by hand well i mean not pretty much everything was all the models were made by hand yeah. um scales were fucking all over the place right. um and i could be wrong about this but i'm pretty sure adaptus titanicus was when they first kind of truly uh brought out the horus heresy storyline right could be wrong but i seem to remember uh, reading or hearing that someone had written an article about the Horus Heresy and then they produced this game and basically rather than having to produce two sides, you know, like Titans and, and Orcs or something it's the same it was, side, yeah okay, yeah. just Another. produce the same models twice yeah. and call it a civil war Yeah. Um, so if anyone knows any different on that, please uh, keep it to yourself <laughs> uh, please comment uh but i'm fairly certain this is this is where the 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 the, the is, 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 no, it'd been mentioned before it'd been mentioned in rule books but i'm sure this is where it was was properly kind of became a thing yeah um and then a lot of the rules for adeptus titanicus were released through white dwarf magazines and they introduced rules for infantry land raiders and even though it was Horus Heresy, you had rules for Eldar and Orc forces because they were still about during the Horus Heresy. So something interesting, maybe they'll do that with this, who knows. Um, but like I say, the origins of Tiny Toys is the Horus Heresy, so it makes sense for them to come back releasing a new game in the Horus Heresy. Uh, and as a complete aside, I I was fucking making this PowerPoint. And I was like, I wonder what was going on in 1988, because I was seven years old. And I kind of remember the 80s being pretty shit, but I don't really remember kind of why. So I kind of Googled, like, what happened in the UK in 1988? Holy fuck balls. If you think the Horus Heresy was bad, go and Google in the 80s. Thatcher and IRA bombs going off, wasn't it? So, so basically, Maggie Thatcher became the longest serving prime minister in 1988. Yeah. Uh, the Lockerbie bomb disaster. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty horrendous stuff, right? The, the, uh, there was a North Sea oil rig that went up in flames and 167 people died in it. And yeah. then literally, I mean, I remember watching it on the news of like, you know, IRA this, British that. And you don't realise till you actually see it all laid out in front of you, just how many tit for tat killings there were. Like, it was fucking insane. I stopped reading it. I was like, shit the bed. I'm fucking glad I don't live in the 80s anymore. But uh, anyways, yeah. that's, a, um, that's like, There you go. Uh, so 1989... Uh, Space Marine first edition came out, and this was the first kind of full epic scale box set. Scale was still roughly six millimeters. The tanks tended to be a bit smaller and right. 
than they should have been. Um, and this box set contained uh, Space Marine, uh, Rhino Land Raider miniatures, infantry, and they introduced the cardboard and plastic buildings, which became quite infamous for Epic in the early days. Mm. Um, and this continued, yeah, this, so this carried on with the Horus Heresy timeline. Uh, but this was the first kind of proper box set where they basically merged all the rules from White Dwarf Adeptus Titanicus into, into a proper game. Uh, and then fast forward to 1991, uh, and we got Space Marine Second Edition. Right. Which had an updated rule set. Scale was still the same, but it was no longer set in the Horus Heresy. And the actual box set contained three armies, so it had Space Marines, Elders, Orcs, uh, and it had a cheeky little Titan as well. So this was box set that I had I had this box set um, right. and I fucking loved it it was fucking brilliant um do you know do you know what I mean I guess like alien races may have sold more a bit more interesting than just like dudes against dudes who are the same dudes um, I think I think honestly um from what I've read about Adeptus Titanus because the first version it was literally a cost thing it's just right. easier to make the same forces so let's do horror heresy but as their their production ability grows as their money yeah. grows, they're able to do more okay. and also you don't know how well that game's going to do and then yeah. they release first edition but it's still a fairly newish game you know it's 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 tiny dude so why would you you know, because you, you don't just go, right, make some plastic elder spruce, you know, and especially back in the 80s and 90s, this this is quite a drawn out process. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and I um, I assume as well, at this point, you know, you, you've got the normal 40k game, which also has orcs and eldar, and which everybody plays with and everybody knows. So it yeah. just makes sense to do that on a smaller, smaller scale. Yeah. So, um but yeah, I mean, Space Marine uh, uh, first and second edition was one of their three main games. Right, interesting. Forty uh, K Fantasy Battle and Epic were were for, and we'll talk about it when it stopped being one of their main games. But um, this this was like yeah, one of their main sellers. Yeah, I do remember um, this being like one of their main games, right? Uh, I re- I remember, yeah, yeah, I do, I do. Remember. Um, so yeah, so this was, this was kind of where my, my love of tiny things started. Um, but again, I kind of played the game, but I didn't really play it properly. I, I got half the rules wrong, et cetera, et cetera. But, but yeah, I had this set. It was a fucking brilliant set and the buildings as well, because they're just cardboard of a plastic top, but they're just fucking so easy and brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. It's good to be more of that. I think. Right? Yeah. Like. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, um, now, now this is like now we're getting into territory that I kind of vaguely remember. Okay, so the '94 uh, second box set for Space Marine Second Edition. So this this was uh, wasn't a new edition. It, it's still with with the previous one. Mm. Uh, it was designed to be played alongside uh, Space Marine or as a standalone game similar to Adeptus Titanicus. But basically, this box set introduced the Mega Class vehicle. So you've got the Imperator Titan and the Orc Mega Gargans, and then a load of uh, cardboard. Like uh, cathedrals, aren't they? Or something? Yeah. yeah. So this was kind of introducing the, the, the big fucking models into the game. But, yeah. Um, such iconic artwork uh, that for those who are around in the 90s, I think, you know, the, oh, these yeah. models, the Imperator, you know. Um, so like yeah. before I'd have been 13. So this was like my heyday of, yeah. of being a child playing, playing. Um, I mean, I've played mostly 40K, but um, being around this and seeing it and reading the battle reports in White Dwarf, the battle reports were fucking brilliant. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is night four, and then this is where it all changed. Epic right. 4000 came out, 1997, and this may sound similar to some things they've done with other game systems recently, but they basically streamlined the rules 
to speed up the games and reduce the complexities of the previous versions. And basically, most of the gamers were like, this is shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, we're selling that cycle, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, basically, uh, they tried to streamline it, and and the the players didn't like it, basically. Um, and from what I read, it was only supported for about six months. Oh, wow. Which is fucking huge. Yeah. Uh, and then it was at this time where it no longer was one of the top three games uh, for GW. Uh but I read a I read a, a article and it stated that the game's designers still maintained that this was the best rule set. It's just people didn't embrace it, um, no. which is interesting because it's kind of that that thing of like just because the rules are better doesn't mean that that's what people want. It it almost seems counterintuitive, but mm. Uh, mm. but interesting. So yeah, this is this is kind of where where Epic kind of dies a bit of a death, really. Right. Um, 2003. Uh, uh, so that's game. an enormous jump. I mean, just looking at that, that's an enormous jump. You know, yeah, just yeah. basically you had release, 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 release. A couple of years, then another release. And then not supported. And then in 2003, so we're talking about six years down the line. Yeah. Um, and you get a book. book. This isn't a box set. This was a book. All right. Um, so the interesting thing with this was... Unlike the previous editions, this was produced using playtesters. Um, right. And they they were quite clever about it. They set it during the third Armageddon War. So it's set during Warhammer 40,000 times. Mm-hmm. However, you were limited to the armies involved because it was based around the third Armageddon War. And then what they did after a while is they started adding armies to it. Got so it. they started with a few armies. Mm-hmm. Because they didn't want to spend lots and lots of money producing armies if it's going to fail, mm-hmm. and then they added to it almost like what's happening with Legion as Imperialis. Yeah, Release yeah, a couple yeah. of armies, and then if it does well, you can keep adding to it. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, this was this was produced by Specialist Games, and Epic Armageddon was was essentially a merge of the original rules and the Epic Forty K rules. So it, it was kind of somewhere in the middle of of a more simplified version, but bringing back some of the flavor. Right. And this is kind of one of the versions that people still play nowadays. People who have been playing, you get like Net Epic. I don't know a huge amount about it, but Epic Armageddon, the rules, uh, you can download them um for free and yeah people uh are, are still playing this to this day so i think that says a lot when you think 20 years ago this book was released and uh people are still playing this game uh today That's really interesting really interesting okay so from there we jump all the way forward to 2018 although i have kind of missed something but we'll we'll we'll, we'll talk about it next uh and we had Adept to Titanicus, uh, which was obviously the updated version of the original 1988 game, uh, based around knights and titans, mainly titans. Uh, no rules for infantry tanks or flyers. And this was uh, a, a, an increased scale. So they've gone from roughly six millimeter to eight millimeter. So one thing with the old Titans is, that, and the Warhammer community did an article on this, the t- the old Titans were fucking tiny, like right. completely tiny. Uh, whereas these ones uh, kind of brought it into scale. Um, and anyone who's seen the Adeptus Titanicus models will know they're fucking stunning, aren't they? Like they, right. you, you could build a Titan, take a picture of it. And if you didn't put it on a base, no one would if there's nothing around it you wouldn't know is that is that 28 mil or is that eight yeah. mil? So, i'd be cool out with all yeah. yeah um i'd have to talk to uh so we we had a bit of a discussion about this in one of our group chats of why didn't at do better because it's a fucking brilliant game awesome models and we kind of said i mean rightly or wrongly we kind of all agreed that basically it's release wasn't amazing was it no. They released. You were very the... limited on that. Yeah, it was like knights, knights, and the um, 
the the larger the warlord the warlord uh, titans and they were all armed the same so it was just a mirror match um and then the actual rules although really good you, you have to play it a lot to get good at the rules there are a lot of fucking rules i thought it was quite complex uh for such a yeah. small, small basically a skirmish game i thought it was yeah. i i've always felt it's quite complex uh, <clears throat> and i understand that's why people love it but i also think that's why more people didn't pick it up because it was probably a bit too involved um yeah. i could be wrong on that like let's know your thoughts on it um i know it is popular people still play it now um, I'm just surprised it was never more popular because the models are fucking brilliant. Like, um, but yeah, so we had Adeptus Titanicus in 2018, and then they re-released Aeronautica Imperialis. So they did actually release this in 2006. Right, I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't realize this. Yeah, no. So Forge World uh, released it using epic scale models, right. which I had no clue about. It was it was played. Yeah, I, I mean, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I had no idea they'd, yeah. they'd, they'd ever done that. Um, but a new version was released by Games Workshop in 2019, used in the same scale as used in Adeptus Titanicus, uh, 8mm. And then a Horus Heresy expansion was released in 2022. So I've never played this game. It's a hex grid system game. Um it, it felt to me when this came out that it was uh, it was trying to rival X Wing, and at that time, maybe a bit before, X Wing was huge, right? I mean, you had these big, massive tournaments. I'm sure it's massive still, but yeah. people went mad for X Wing. I mean, at our local club, people played it all the time. Didn't they like people went mad for it. Um, so you felt like it was trying to rival. Yeah, take some of the chunk out of that. I mean, I played. Yeah, that's I played X Wing. Yeah, it was a fucking brilliant game. Yeah. Um, I have heard that this was really popular in America. I don't know how true that is. Um, right. I've never seen anyone play it in the UK. I'm sure people do. Um, I've heard it's a good game. Um, but in 2019, when they released this, obviously people were kind of a bit like, wow, you've released these tiny Titans. You've released these tiny Knights. Now yeah. we've got these tiny planes. Are you bringing Epic back? And they were like, "No, no, we're not bringing <laughs> Epic back." Um, what they have done since talking about Legionus Imperialis is they have stopped selling all the 40k versions of Aeronautica Imperialis, which I think is a bit of a shame for people that play this right. game. So you can only buy the Heresy era stuff, um, and I think that is it. So yeah, so that's the kind of that's really interesting. Yeah, really the potted history of. Um... Uh, of it yeah i mean um it is interesting that that i i suppose the the line i would draw from that original first adeptus titanicus release in 1988 to the titanicus released in um whatever it was 2000 the, the, you know the most updated one we've got the boxes look similar is what i would say you know what you've yeah. got in the context of the box looked looked quite similar so i i think they probably we're harping back to that uh, the specialist design team. You know, I can imagine that some of the older members, of managers who are from that time, probably like, oh, let's just you know recreate that. But as you say, Adeptus uh, Titanicus felt like it tripped almost at the first hurdle, despite having a big, 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 big fan base and not getting massive, um, because um, uh, you know I, I think that the the lack of variety in that initial box was you know it wasn't like a forty k box where there's so much variety to, to to the release. I think also it's quite deceptive, uh, a Titan. You know, certainly like a Warlord Titan, they are an enormous amount of work to paint well. So there's yeah. not, although it's like a skirmish game, it's not a job that you can just be like, I'm just going to slap some contrast paint on this. You know, actually most people paint them with airbrushes, you know, those panels, which isn't yeah. accessible for everybody, right? Um so I think, yeah, really, yeah, really interesting the the positive history. So yeah, so what what do we well, know I'm, so far? Oh, sorry, I'm, sorry. Uh, so just just an aside of that, I'm slowly building a um, a Reaver Titan, uh, and in in typical bloke fashion, I was like, I don't need the fucking instructions for this, ah, and I've made I've what? made so many mistakes yeah. on this fucking model that I am now like. 
following the instructions. Like they're then they're, they're a brilliant kit. But they're kind of, yeah. They're not simple. No, no, but they they are fucking amazing. But like my eight year old could put a space ring together. He couldn't. He couldn't yeah. build this. Like not. I mean, yeah. fucking hell. But yeah. Um. So what we know so far, uh, there is a new box set coming. Uh, at some point, and <laughs> this. Yeah. Yes. So I I've uh, scoured the internet actually prior to this. So uh, I've heard two. Have conf- so three conflicting things. So first thing, the okay. delay. So, so shall we delay- just explain? So so essentially, for those that aren't aware, they had initially said that this box set was going to be released in August, and then like I don't know when it was, like a few weeks before it's going to be released, they were like, "Oh no, sorry, we're not going to make it in time, but it'll be coming at some point this year," and that's kind of all we've heard. Yeah, and, and it was interesting really because the, there was such a massive build-up. Yeah, huge. Um, and they they had clearly wanted to leverage the hype that they'd created, and then it just oof, you know yeah. fell flat. I, I reckon if you went to if you knew anything about marketing, I think they would probably be like, "This is the worst way that you could probably hype up and release something." You literally <laughs> couldn't have fucked this more if you tried. <laughs> yeah. So there are. So I've had three conflicting stories right so the first uh story i've heard which is probably the simplest is that australia hasn't got their boxes yet for some reason and that because australia hasn't got them that's put a, a delay on on the world right w- release I, I don't believe that second who... second se- second well kind of second but it's also <laughs> matched in with the third so basically um i had had heard that they had used um uh uh, some material uh, from other books, history books, history phrases, uh, when creating uh, when creating this uh, creating the book, and it was picked up uh, like after the editing, after it had gone to the publishers, and so the rules need to be reprinted. But what I've heard most recently, actually, it kind of and it's linked to that second one, is that one of the missions is called Blood and Honor. And um, Blood and Honor, if you're a heresy player from the original Black Books, is a common name for uh, heresy missions. Like the the first book had a a mission called Blood and Honor. And they're fairly typical words. When you think about the warrior landscape, when you think about brothers fighting in arms, Blood and Honor is one of those. However, it is a phrase that was used um, by the Hitler Youth on their on their knives. Right. So when when they were hit part of the Hitler Youth, they were given a knife that said Blood and yeah, Una, yeah, yeah. whatever it might be in German yeah. and that that was actually picked up uh and and complained about by one of the early release influencers who basically picked it up and said this you can't sell this because blood and honor is a is a german phrase used wow. by the nazis and so because of that all of the editions were recalled um and uh that that put the limit. so those are the three different things that i've heard and whether one of them is true all of them true or there's i mean i find it interesting because they're actually different to the to the ones that i heard oh uh, interesting oh right yeah, so the first rumor i heard uh way back uh literally probably the day they said that it was getting pushed back um was that they have used uh, Nazi ideology, and it wasn't about the blood and honor. It was to do with I uh, 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 can't remember what it was called, but some political ideology that they then kind of hashed into um, into some of the fluff. And someone was like, "This, this is this is the Nazis." Um, and then I heard that basically some of the solar auxiliary tank commanders had uh, Nazi uh, officer names and they hadn't even changed the names. It was literally just right. the exact yeah. names the, of the, whoever. It could be so, like solar commander Rommel, the desert. Yeah, right, okay. commander Rommel of the fucking solar auxiliaries. So that's what I heard. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. I then heard that basically the rule book had so many mistakes that they couldn't 
even though they'd already printed it, they couldn't actually release it. And then I heard another rumor um, basically saying that they hadn't produced enough uh, of something, like they had the boxes already, but they didn't have enough of something. Right. Um, I think basically whatever it was, it must have been I it must have been pretty fucking serious. Cause yeah. uh because they've basically they've the fuck they've absolutely shot themselves in the foot. Like uh, again, for, for those that aren't aware, like the build up to this was insane. Like uh all the Adeptus Titanicus models, all the Adeptus Titanicus uh uh terrain that you could buy was sold out people were just like i'm not i'm not i'm just fucking buying everything they could get their hands on uh all the um aeronautica stuff was sold out like this is stuff that just people hadn't been buying really all of it sold out in a matter of weeks like i remember going to like tiny little fucking hobby stores in deepest darkest norfolk and they're like no we fucking sold out mate everyone's just desperate for epic uh, so you've gone from that where people are literally just grabbing everything and anything. And obviously GW have stopped releasing this stuff because they're repackaging it for yeah. Legions Imperialis. Uh, so now you can't even buy it. So people are just like, well, what, what, what the fuck do I do? I, I need my fucking plastic crack. Oh, I know. There's a shitload of people out there knocking out 3D printed stuff. So all you see now is people getting entire armies 3D printed when they should have been buying all their plastic stuff from Games Workshop. So, they're really like, strong, right? They're, it, they're just ready to go. Yeah, yeah uh, but it is fucking madness of just like you know, like I don't want to, I don't want to detract too much from what we're meant to be talking about, but um, for a for a release schedule, it is fucking insane. It really is. Like, I think they'd have been better off even if they just released some of the, the first wave stuff that they weren't planning to release, even if they said, look, we know there's no rules. Yeah. Like they're coming, but here have this for now. I just, but I, I think whatever they did, it would have shot them in the foot. You know, if they'd released models, people would have moaned like, Oh fucking we're getting models, but we're not getting rules. It, it, it's, it's like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's... I think it's also, it's, I think you raise a really good point about the 3d uh, print market. So, I think that what what was quite clear is with Adeptus Titanicus, 3D printing, when that was released, was was nowhere near the point where you could just 3D print a Titan. Yeah. And I think that even now, I see very, very few 3D printed Titans. I see uh, a few like tilt shields or kind of head alternatives and things like that, but well, never a yeah. whole yeah. The difference yeah. with, because they're just essentially tiny little square or rectangular boxes and they're quite small, yeah. You, you know, you literally have seen entire armies of yeah. of, of, of these things. So it's interesting that they're going to have to compete now. And the, the price has got to be competitive enough to yeah. be able to compete yeah, yeah, yeah. with uh, somebody who's just got a, a 3D printing company or just yourself. That's the other thing. You could just be like, well, it's going to cost me 500 quid to get a Legion's Imperialis army together. It's going to cost me 200 quid to get a printer, 100 quid for resin, mm. a bit of time to sort it out. It's a no-brainer, really. You know what? what yeah, yeah. And and it links back into people who've been playing Net Epic and Epic Armageddon because people have been producing their own Epic miniatures for the last twenty years because they haven't been able to get hold of it. You know, since Fortrod stopped producing stuff, they literally haven't been able to get hold of it. So, uh, you know, yeah, people have literally been producing entire armies. If you go and uh, look on YouTube and that, you'll see people doing battle reports. Of, of like epic armageddon and stuff with fully 3d printed armies like that it's been going on for years and all that's happened now is gw have gone look this is coming but we're not going to give you the stuff to do it so yeah it's it's fucking insane but um not not to harp on too much about that i mean essentially it's just a massive fuck up but um Whenever we do get the new box set, it's going to be containing uh, free forces. So it'll have space marines, solar auxilia, and it will have um, two titans. Uh, so the space marines will have two command squad bases, and the bases is is basically a twenty five millimeter base with five dudes on it. So it'll have two command squad bases, eight tac marine bases, two assault marine bases, two support squad bases, two heavy support squad bases. 
and two cataphractic terminator bases and then you'll have four contempted dreadnoughts three predator tanks and two sakaran battle tanks so that will be the space marine side and then you'll also be getting uh like i said solar auxiliary forces so you'll have two command bases eight last rifles four flame of bases four velatari shock troops are they the guys with the axes yes uh oh, yeah I think I can't remember. Uh four Ogron bases and four Aethon heavy sentinels. So these were the new sentinels. Brand new, right? Yeah. That was showing. Uh which were interesting. They kind of split the room a bit. Um there'll be four Lemon Ross battle tanks and two Malkador heavy tanks, which looks so fucking good. <laughs> and you'll have two Warhound Titans. Uh, and these will be including weapons that have not been produced previously in plastic or available previously for Adeptus Titanicus. So you get a new stuff for Adeptus Titanicus as well, and that includes Ursus Claws and a load of other shit that I don't really know what it does yet, but sounds cool as fuck. Uh, so a pretty jam-packed box. I think um, it will be very interesting to see the cost of this, uh, because they keep banging on about this new box set contains 223 miniatures and it's like well it does but most of them are 8 millimeters tall <laughs> why yeah. fucking thanks for that so it'll be interesting um, but yeah so we'll talk a, a quick uh, kind of breakdown of how the game will play and again this is just going off um, what they've talked about on the Warhammer community uh, so Obviously, they're only releasing little bits, little snippets of information. Uh, so we don't know a huge amount, but the recommended game size will be 3,000 points. And the game will be played on a five foot by four foot table. And it's been pretty good that they've been releasing this information because a lot of people have been asking these kind of questions. Uh so you'll choose your allegiance, obviously traitor or loyalist, and then you'll choose your primary army army list, which has to be at least 70% uh, of your army. Um, and when you make uh, an army, you have to choose uh, formations. You have to have at least one formation for every 1,500 points in the list. And then a formation is basically made up of detachments, and then you can add optional detachments, as you can see on the left-hand side there. Um, and then a detachment is, is basically the equivalent of kind of like a unit in Age of Darkness. Um, and we'll see some examples of the detachments uh, later on. But one of the examples they gave us was the Legion Demi Company. Um, and the way this is described is dem demi companies were the heart of every legion formed of several contingents of tactical legionnaires working in concert with support units. Tactically flexible demi companies were trained to fight alongside other legion assets, such as aerial support or armored units to ensure battle readiness in the face of myriad threats. And this is kind of one thing they've been going on about um, on these Warhammer communities is this is a real uh all arms combat game so you can see the compulsive detachments that you have to take as hq support core and core um and you can imagine hq will be your leader support is probably like a support squad or heavy support squad and core will be your infantry choices but then you get optional detachments so you can add transports you can add more support uh you can add tanks artillery you can add air support um which I fucking love the idea of just, you know, a load of infantry hunkered down and air support come flying in, dropping bombs on dickheads. Um, and then once you've chosen your main kind of uh, primary army list, you can then add allied uh, detachments. Um, and they've talked about how you'll be able to add kind of night households or titans, uh, and they very much talked about, you know, they they recommend adding allies. They recommend mixing it up. Don't just have one force. You know, this is meant to be a huge game, so you can add other stuff in, which um, I really like the idea of, just to keep yeah. it a bit more interesting. Yeah. Um, and then they also talked about 
Um, the Legion Demi Company was one of the examples, but there'll be armoured companies and there'll be aerial assault companies. And I mean, I'd like to think there'll be like drop pod stuff. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the yeah. imagination can just yeah. go on can it, of what you could and yeah. couldn't do. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so the game will be split into phases. Uh, so you've got the orders phase where you will secretly assign one of four orders to each detachment. So the orders are uh, advance, uh, march, um, uh, charge, and first fire. So advance, uh, not to go too deep into all of this, but advance allows a detachment to move and fire. March allows a detachment to move double or triple if it's infantry, but it can't shoot. Charge allows a double movement if it gets detachment into base contact with an enemy detachment. And first fire means you can't move, but you get to shoot first. Uh, so this is what I really like about this. So you'll roll off for your initiative and then you put your orders down and you put your orders down secretly. So you don't know what your opponent is putting orders down and then you flip them all over. Right, yeah. You, you uh, take it in turns to activate your detachments. So I really like the idea of that. It just adds that kind of fog of war almost, you know what I mean? Like it's, sometimes you're going to be like, well, it's fucking obvious what he's going to do here. But yeah. there's other times. That, that is the way that Adeptus Titanicus uh, works, I think. Right, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I really like that idea. Uh, and then uh, the third phase is the movement. So you'll move. Uh, and then combat, and then combat works. Uh, you have first fire engaged, and then advanced fire. So, if I remember correctly, uh, first fire. Obviously, if you've given the order, first fire, you get to shoot first. Then engaged is all the close combat, mm -hmm. and then advanced fire is all the other shooting. Uh, so it's interesting that kind of close because with this, it's close combat, but it's it's almost done at like it's not really it's close combat, but also just shooting the fuck into each other from really close. Yeah. As opposed to just bludgeoning each other. And then yeah. you've got your end phases where you work. And interestingly, you work out victory points at the end phase. Right. Okay. So one of the things it was talking about is you, and I don't know if this is, because sometimes all have community articles, they say stuff, but it's just bollocks. Yeah. They're just saying, that. but it was kind of mentioning you could table your opponent, but still lose the game. Depending right. on that points end. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I'm a big fan of. Like, play the mission. Don't just kick fucking to your opponent. Yeah. Um, and then they talked a little bit about how shooting will work, but essentially um, it kind of works pretty similar to most Warhammer games. You've got a range. Uh, you'll notice on the left, a lot of the ranges are quite short, eight inches. Yeah, really short, yeah. Uh, you have a number of dice to roll and then you roll to hit. There's no to wound in. Uh, and then you have an AP, which obviously affects the save um, that your opponent takes. But where I find a lot of the flavour for these weapons comes in is the traits. If you see that they've got a soul, light, light, mm. anti. So they've, they've, they've told us quite a bit of these rules and, and essentially it just affects how well they work against certain things. So light weapons can't damage tanks, I think it was. Assault right. works better the closer you are. Um, light anti-tank, uh, basically, I think off the top of my head, you don't you lose your AP if you're shooting at infantry. So it's right. better against tanks than it is infantry. Um, so there's a lot of that uh, where the flavor comes from, from the kind of universal rules. Mm. Uh, and then actual combat, when you're in combat, uh, basically individual bases are paired off and you uh, you basically roll 2d6 and right. close assault factor. So right. close assault factor is mentioned, we'll see it in a bit, on, on the detachment card. So it's a lot more simplified, but when you've got like 300 dudes, it kind of needs to be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. more simplified. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of very quickly how how they talk about um, so far the game work. And there's obviously going to be a load more rules. You've got like Overwatch rules, moving through yeah. terrain, this, that, and the other. Yeah. 
Um, and then these are the actual models. Uh, so these are the models that are going to be coming with the initial box release. So you've got the command squad in the top left and the assault squad. And like a lot of people mentioned, that assault squad is probably going to find its way into Age of Darkness at some point. Yeah. Uh, attack squad, support squad, uh, cataphractic terminator squad, and then you've got the Contempt of Dreadnought as well. Um, and kind of like going back to what you're saying about not wanting to pay 300 dudes, but you could see very easily how you could knock, a f- you could knock fucking tons of these out in like an hour, I reckon. Yeah. So I think that, you know, just you give it a rattle can of like an off white and then seraphim sepia wash and then just paint the shop pads green and then, and then that would be enough, right? Then maybe a bit of silver on the yeah. guns. Yeah. And then if you really want to later on go in and do some more... I mean, I guess you, it's like anything, isn't it? You could go as detailed as you like, but really, when these are on the tabletop from three feet away and they're eight millimetres tall... Yeah. But, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no one's seen that, are they? Um, uh, it, yeah, you'd be better to spend more time on the bases, actually, I think. Than- exactly, yeah. The stuff that's going to be seen, like the, the command uh, squad, like the banner, like spend a bit of time on the banner, put a transfer on there or something. Um, yeah. I was a little bit sad when I saw that they've done six mil, uh, Mark Six armor for this. It it doesn't surprise me because it's in keeping. But again, Mark Six is just the heresy armor now, isn't it? But I was a little bit sad, and it does make me think that whenever I get infantry, I you, will probably get get a three D three D printer. I probably will be one of those people because I want Mark Three Iron Warriors, not Mark Six. Yeah. Um, Oh, I see. I'm my mind. Um, but the cataphracty look fucking awesome. Yeah. Um, right. But yeah, they're just tiny little dudes. And then the tanks. Oh, an epic Sakara. Now that's a uh, that that I can get on that. Right. That's really cool. I, think. I just think they're fucking awesome. And yeah. I mean, I have painted up some. I think I showed you these before. Some. Uh, yeah, uh, they look great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Iron Warrior Storm Eagles, and yeah. they're so fucking quick to paint. Yeah. Like. It, it goes back to what we said, like you can spend as little or as... I mean, right. the hardest thing for these was the fucking hazard stripes, but yeah. besides that, it's a fucking piece of piss. Yeah. And actually, I really enjoyed painting them because you just like spray it, a bit of battle damage. Oh, sure. it, yeah. like, it's fucking great. But um, yeah, so these, I mean, there's not really much more to say about them. I think... Yeah, I think, especially yeah. the only thing I would say about the plasma is that it's yeah. uh, different to the different to the um to the one we currently have so whether that's going to be a, a and it seems in the future to be a consistent thing they've done because i've seen other armies that they've shown and and they've done it with other sakarans as well which mm-hmm. seems yeah, very interesting. i i don't know what i mean yeah we'll see if a passive kit comes in the future and whether it'll be the same as that yeah or whether people will be cutting those off and sticking them <laughs> background <laughs> know how it will come yeah that could be the way but yeah i mean it is what it is but yeah i think these look fucking awesome and then these are um what i would imagine is the first wave release so this is like a support box set right um so it'll be coming with uh leviathans radios uh rapiers and interestingly right yeah i fucking love because you never saw them, never saw them. But I just love the idea of having these, you know, out front of a massive, you know, battlefield with and and actually, you know, people are going to be using aircraft. So the the missile defense systems yeah. actually have a purpose. Whereas like I have never seen it used in 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 Age of Darkness, even in, in first edition, no one ever took the uh the air defense i think is they're fucking really expensive if i remember mm, um, interesting uh, the other thing i noticed so do we know what sort of base sizes these guys are on say like so Leviathan and dreadnought i believe these are i could be totally wrong here 25 millimeter oh so it's really teeny tiny okay that's so interesting i know for the infantry i'm fairly certain these are 25 millimeter right so they're really really tiny whether they've changed it for these, I don't know. Like yeah. maybe, maybe they're twenty-eight millimeter or something. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, they're and they're thinner as well. You'll notice 
the bases are thinner than yeah, the current. Thinner, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Month. Yeah, it was just a, it was an interesting move. I think that's harder if you want to. Well, maybe not harder necessarily if you want to magnetize the bases, but you just have to use thinner thinner magnets, right? Yeah, I have purchased a lot of very thin uh, magnets. Yeah. But, um, I mean, the reasoning for it was it just looked a bit garish having big stands, which I think makes perfect sense to be honest. Yeah, makes yeah does. And then the uh, design of the rapiers is quite interesting. I do, yeah, I like yeah. the designs to the sabers actually. It's the saber the foot the 30k saber tank um in the in the which, way that the panels designed on the side. Which I quite like. And again, are we gonna see a 28, 32 millimeter version of that? Yeah. In the Age of Darkness. Yeah. And are we gonna see tarantulas come back? Maybe. Who yeah, knows? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. They're very interesting. Yeah. Well the, these are little snippets of things to come, right? Um and then oh, yeah, great. Yeah. The, the Thunderhawk uh, is is been out for a while now, but uh, I just think it looks fucking awesome. But, then, but they've replaced the bases, right? These hexagonal bases. Base. Yeah, okay. and I'd say like that base looks a little bit small to me. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, uh, it might be on like a forty mil base though. That that might be uh, yeah. Mil. But yeah, I mean, it just looks fucking brilliant. And we've got the Kratos coming and Kratos the looks well. that looks up. brilliant. Yeah. It looks so fucking good. Just imagine squadrons of them driving across the battlefield. Yeah, um, the one thing they haven't shown yet, which I um, feel like they're just kind of like waiting. Uh, we've not seen any Land Raiders or Spartans. Right, uh, okay. Yeah. Just or Mastodons, because I'd love to see a tiny little Mastodons. Yeah, so that would... Okay, yeah. So, I mean, we've got transports, haven't we, in the way that we've got rhinos there. So I'd imagine that Spartans are Spartans and Land Raiders are coming. Oh, they've got to be coming. Yeah, they've got to be. I think I think they were just waiting to be like, oh, here they are. Yeah. Um, obviously, it all went tits up. Um, <laughs> but yeah, they look fucking brilliant. Um, so just not to harp on too much about the rules, but this this is... We talked about the formations and then the detachments, and then this is what detachments look like, essentially. And in the box set, I believe all the rules are in the rule book, but you'll also be getting cards, um, much like you did in the original games. And I fucking love it. So basically one side has the rules, the other side has how, how you take the detachment. And just to give you an idea of the points, when it said 3,000 points is kind of your standard game. So this is four bases of, of Terminators, so five dudes on the base. So 20 Terminators, but it will be on four of the 25 mil bases, uh, is 50 points. So you could have an entire company. Yeah, to, just, just there, uh, right? Like, and actually, it, yeah. And it'll only cost you a few hundred points. Yeah. Uh, and as you see at the bottom, you can increase the, the attachment uh, by adding the points. And the more you add, the cheaper it costs. Um, yeah. And then... Uh, with the Kratos, so it comes with two, but you can jump it up to a squadron of six Kratos, fucking, and that would cost you 350 points, uh, which is fuck all, really. And yeah. then again, you get an idea. So the movement, eight inches for the Kratos, so quite slow. The Terminator's five inches, so they're not moving fast. And this is one thing they were talking about in this scale of game. You really are going to need transports for your dudes because... Uh, although Terminators can deep strike in this, if you see right. the special rules. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah. Which is interesting, because that's something they can't do in Age of Darkness. Yeah. Um, and then just looking at the Kratos quickly again, it was talking about some of the rules for the weapons. So Bunker Buster, so on the Melter Blast gun. So in this game, you can destroy terrain. Certain weapons can destroy okay. terrain. Don't know how that will work. Yeah. Do you replace a normal building with a ruined building? Because that's probably going to cost you quite a bit. But it would look, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, it look cool, right? But yeah, is, I mean, I'll be honest. That's what I'd be going for. I would be for every bit of terrain I built, I'd have a rubble. Fucking, fucking brilliant. You could use a few stones if you want to keep it cheap, right? You know, yeah, it. yeah, of course. Yeah, there's ways you can do it. But um, yeah, like uh, it just goes to show. Uh, the weapons all have kind of a purpose and a thing yeah. that they specifically designed for. Uh, and then the Thunder Gun Thunderhawk gunship. So again, uh, 
I can't see what the points are because it's covered in a box. What's it say? Oh, the 150 points for one for one Thunderhawk. So again, uh, if you're playing a 3,000 point game, you can see how you could easily have, you know, loads of troops, loads of flies, loads of tanks. You can really mix it all up. Yeah. Um, and then one of the things they did show was the Legion uh, special rules. Uh, I don't know if do you want to have a quick read of them. Yeah, so uh, we, we haven't got every Legion special rule as of no. yet. No, okay. So we've got no, one... literally all they've released. Yeah. So born in the saddle. So white scars models with jink special rule improve their jink save uh, by one. With jink six up, would become jink five up, etc. So maximum of three. Okay, cool. So uh, I mean, I don't know about too much about this, but I assume that that suggests to me that. Things with Jink are going to have like bikes and things like that are then coming for them, right? I would guess, yeah, some, well, if you look at the Thunderhawk Legion Thunderhawk gunship, it has Jink five plus. Okay, okay, so flyers I'm, could have. I'm Jink. guessing flyers, bikes. I I guess it's an invulnerable save. I don't yeah. really know, but okay, um, cool, yeah. cool. Uh, so incarnate violence uh, when they make a fight roll all world is as infantry cavalry and walker models can reroll a single d6 when making fight rolls okay yeah and then salamanders let's see if it's better than their normal uh, their legion model. <laughs> so we're making a morale check a detachment that contains only a salamanders model only salamanders models rolls 2d6 and chooses which result they prefer in addition all salamanders attachment the army gave the impact of a special i mean that feels a bit more like the old special with the salamanders uh really but yeah yeah interesting so a little bit of flavor in with each uh with each uh with each legion i mean, I mean yeah uh, interesting who comes out on top as well like who we think is the best yeah regions um again like White Scar's fairly obvious. World Eat is fairly obvious. Salamanders is an interesting one. Normally yeah. they get like fancy equipment and stuff. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, it just adds a bit of flavour to each legion. So you're not just playing the same uh, the same armies. And also, yeah. we don't know if, if they're going to get more than one special rule. We literally know nothing. This this is you know this is just what what we've been shown. So they could get extra equipment or something are our white scar is going to get their fancy um land yeah, speed, land you know, speed is, yeah. i'd imagine at some point they probably will um and then the solar octilia so again these are the models coming in the box set so you've got the command squad you got the ogrens at the top you got the valid taurus was it the the axe dudes mm -hmm. and then the rifle dudes and then the fancy new uh sentinel mm -hmm. uh how do you feel about that sentinel? Uh I I feel fine about it. I think that um for epic scale, I just think that that it's fine. I think that if they did it in a bigger scale, uh so for 28 mil, you know, they have the file, right? So it's not like they couldn't make it bigger. Uh it would be interesting yeah, yeah. to see, you know, a really weathered version of uh that kind of tank would be fine. I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine there because also I would never touch Soda Resilient with a 10 foot barge pole. I think I'm <laughs> I'm all about that Legion life. So <laughs> uh yeah i don't hate it there was uh, people said like oh steampunky blah 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 it's a bit steampunky but i mean the whole range uh I of, think... um of uh of of the myths really so yeah i think the the gray and the gold makes it look more steampunky than it yeah actually. um but yeah i don't i don't i i quite like it to be fair yeah. when i first saw it i was like what the fuck is that and then... i think they're in, a, they're in a difficult situation i think with solar orcs because they don't want to make it seem like imperial guard in from 40k yeah. uh, they don't want to make it too blocky like a legion contemptor or like a walker so they're going to have to be more inventive and that and the, you know they've kind of gone for this weird kind of armager dreadnought mix and then combined yeah. together and smashed it together and that's what they've got yeah i i uh i quite like it um yeah. and then the tanks this is great these, these are great tanks but we all love rec and recognize from the forger of range and you know now they're in teeny tiny plastic aren't they so Okay, I oh so good. So <laughs> good. I can't wait to do like a Talon Iron Warriors first, yeah. like thousands of these dickheads. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Fucking brilliant. That's cool. Um, and then this is kind of again what I'd imagine will be part of their first wave releases. So Solar Auxilia's support box, so it'll be coming with a fuckload of rapier. I think you get like 12 rapier. Right. The little I can't think what they're called, the blowing up 
bomb tank thing. Dem uh, the, uh, the demolition, I can't, Dem I was about to say demolition derbies, but I don't think that's what they call yeah. it, is it? Uh, yeah, I, I recognize yeah. They blow up on a six or something, don't they? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Tom used to have great De fun. Demo bot, is that what they call demo bot, maybe? I don't know. Oh, I can't remember. I thought I'm sure they had like a proper a proper name. I can't remember. I was, but um, um, so the so this is great. I mean, there's 40 miniatures in that box. What's really interesting about this is that they have a very the the rapiers have a very distinctive, different style from the space from the legions one. Yeah, which yeah. which again is just sort of saying kind of says to me, yeah, that could be the design for a new 40k uh, for a 30k plastic. Um, Legion yeah, these these are the what we have now, aren't they? Yeah. These are basically the rapiers we have now. Exactly uh, right. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, these are basically carbon copies of the solar auxiliary ones available. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the same shape as the uh, the Starte. So yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah. But yeah, I love all this. I think it looks fucking great. Yeah. Um, and it's interesting how they're releasing stuff. They're releasing stuff in boxes, so you don't just buy you know a few dudes you buy a support thing and this will be like probably a formation in its own yeah um so yeah interesting uh and then some of the other tanks they were showing so oh fuck i can never remember the names of these is it bane blades or whatever they are yeah i mean they were bane blades chassis yeah i think yes. it's the storm hammer or something like that yeah, I no. oh, so fuck, man. Um, it's great to but, see this tank though in in teeny tiny plastic yeah they look fucking brilliant don't they i and i think this is the scale where tanks like this work best because you can actually maneuver them you know yeah. <laughs> if you have a 28 millimeter version of this on a heavily um populated table with terrain like half the time they can't fucking move anywhere they're just yeah. kind of stuck in the corner yeah um and then uh artillery uh detachments um which again are just yeah, yeah. tiny they look pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. They just smaller great. versions of what we've got. Yeah. yeah. Um which which I love. Uh and then they did show us uh, a version of a solar auxiliary formation. So this is the sub cohort. I won't read for it, but again, you get the HQ uh detachment, last rifle detachment support, and then you can add in battle tanks and light armor and air support and all the other stuff i mean we don't really know how it will work like what will constitute a battle tank you know will they have a list of solar auxilia battle tanks i'm i'm not sure they've mentioned it but um yeah it, it combined arms basically isn't it it's it's uh yeah it's, i suppose the other thing um oh this is interesting actually yeah. so, so this was the second one they showed which was an armored company so yeah so you have two battle tank detachments and a heavy armor detachment, and then you can add optional dudes. So this is where it gets really cool for me. You can literally field entire formations of tanks, which is the most solar auxiliar thing fucking ever. Um, <clears throat> and just cool as fuck, basically. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah, it's good. Is, can, can, a, can a Space Marine Legion take an armor? Uh detachment do we know I, well it's it kind of talked about they will be able to but it, it hasn't we haven't seen what that would look like um but one thing they do say is that you will need infantry to hold objectives so you can have all the tanks in the world you I need avoid, i can't infantry. avoid the fact that i need some infantry yeah. in, a, in a force uh and then some more examples of what the detachments look like and again you've got the rules on one side and and how many you take and you start with a certain amount and then you pay points to add more so you could have a squadron of six auxiliar super heavy tanks rolling across the battlefield which i think is fucking sexy as fuck yeah that's really cool um yeah yeah it's just cool and I quite like the system of this. It's a lot like the, the older system. It's just quite quite nice to just have cards yeah. with all the information on, whether you'll start scratching stuff out and writing over the top of them when they start. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, and then some of the rules they showed uh, for solar auxilia. Uh, so without reading the one on the right, because it doesn't make a huge amount of sense if it... But essentially, solar auxilia can only perform the advance order unless right. 
they have a command unit within a certain range of them. We don't know what that range will look like. So I really like this. You start adding the flavor of these are actually humans, not fucking Astartes. So yeah. they have someone telling them what to do. Otherwise, they revert back to kind of bitch basic tactics. Yeah. Um, and then close formation fighting. Basically, you increase its, I uh, can't remember what it's called now, combat assault factor, was it? Close assault factor. By one when they're in base space contact with one or more friendly solar auxiliary infantry models. So this kind of harks back to the Age of Darkness rules where when they're kind of they basically perform better when they're in base to base combat, uh base to base with another solar yeah. auxiliary model. Uh so again, I really like that. You get that idea of, you know, like close ranks, like get in a line and start shooting. Uh and it's just adding a bit of flavor. So it's not just a large crapper version of Astartes. Because um, <laughs> it's easy to go down that route, though, isn't it? It's easy to be like, well, this plays exactly like Space Marines. They're just yeah. a bit sh- And yeah. I've got more. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I really like that, especially the chain of command thing. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of that. Uh, and then one of the last things they talked about were flyers. So flyers are going to be working quite interesting. The way that flyers are going to be working they they mentioned in the article was you basically put the model on the table edge and you fly it in a straight line and then it attacks something and then it's off the table so they come on do a strafing run and then they're off the table basically unless they have the transport special rule and then they can fly and land drop troops off and then get out um but I really like the idea of like flyers, you know, zipping along the battlefield, come in, you know, unleash their payload and then fuck mm-hmm. off into the sky again. Um, and then, I, I mean, I'm not going to keep reading all these rules, but th- again, they'll have different special rules built into their their profiles. So Interceptor basically gives you extra rules against shooting other flyers. And again, I really like this because now you are actually taking planes to fight other planes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, and and that, that's kind of something that doesn't really happen in 28 millimeter Age of Darkness. You wouldn't spend there aren't that the... many dogfights in the uh, the air. Oh, and this is it. Yeah. So you really will have to think about countering other people's air because people are going to be bringing it. So then you have to bring something to counter theirs. Otherwise you're just going to have no, you know, you're just a sitting duck. Um, yeah. So I really like the, I basically with this interceptor rule, you, you can shoot during the movement phase, yeah. um, but you have to shoot at other, other flyers. Uh, and then we've got rules for transport and essentially there's going to be transports. There's going to be, Assault transports and then large assault transports. So the transport is like your Arvis, uh lighter where it can come on. You can jump out, but you can't charge when you jump out. You'll have assault transport where you can fly on, jump out and assault. And then you have large assault transport where you can fly on, jump off assault, but it can carry uh, like dreadnoughts and shit. Uh, so like your Thunderhawk gunship, you can fill up with with dreadnoughts and stuff, which which I think is fucking super cool. When it refers to large assault transport eight, does it mean it can hold eight detachments? In? I presume so. Uh, no, not eight detachments. I would guess eight bases. Eight bases, right? Okay, okay. So you could have like eight, yeah, eight dreadnoughts or eight times. But then uh, I don't know if a dreadnought will take up. Oh, no. see, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah interesting. Um, yes, yeah, so there's still lots we don't know, but yeah, we get we're starting to get an inkling of where this might be going. Yeah. So if you look at the Terminator rules, I think it says bulky something. So right. maybe it comes into you could only take like four Terminator bases on this. I don't honestly know. Yeah. Um, but it makes sense, doesn't it? Like rather than just being able to, you know, yeah, a dreadnought shouldn't take up the same amount of space as a couple of fucking rooms. Yeah, dudes. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yeah, that's that's the flyers, and then you have got bombing run as well. So you can you can bring your bombers on, and they can they can bomb a target, or they can they can bomb buildings if their weapons allow them to destroy buildings. So you can fly on and destroy buildings, which I fucking that's really is, cool. 
it's the most iron warriors thing ever just flatten those buildings uh which again we don't really know how it's gonna work behind if you're a uh titan right you're just like well i'm gonna take that out and that's gone but that's it isn't it like it, it starts creating so many options of like you know obviously depending on how you build your table but you could have terrain that is enough for a titan to hide behind and then first turn your bomber flies on and flattens it and then everyone else shoots the titan um, yeah I, I love it it's uh, you know an interactive battlefield is and again it's something you could do in age of darkness but it would start getting fucking expensive because the terrain is fucking expensive anyways in uh, age of darkness um but yeah it, it, it's i i i I think it will fit in really well with legions like Iron Warriors. Mm. Their whole thing has always been about you can destroy buildings, but no one ever takes buildings in Age of Darkness that you can actually fucking destroy. Yeah, you know. So, so yeah. And then we um, get on to uh, strategic assets. So this is basically your thirty percent of your your allied forces and i don't really know how it's going to work but i presume you can't run titans as a primary list the way they keep describing titans and titans and knights is is there there's something that gets added to a primary force but it would be cool to be able to run like an army of of titans and i think you and me discussed this like you know see almost like see if you can bring down a titan with your bunch of dickheads um yeah. but maybe that wouldn't work in the game I, I, until we've actually seen the rules yeah we won't know but these are the two titans that are going to come in the main game and again these weapons are all new weapons i believe that yeah be... i mean well, well, uh, is it a great i mean it looks like an ursus claw to me but i don't, I don't think but it one's is an ursus claw One's a melter lance or something. One's a it's missile. New, the melter lance is it, and then the the uh, missile. Right. Yeah, missile and then a vol big fuck off volkite basically. But what if you play a Devil's Side Hammer? Tell us what's new there and what isn't new, because uh, I thought they did all that some time ago. Not, but so I think they do. But I think this is plastic rather than having uh, to buy the rest. Right. Ah. Uh, so I think that's the biggest change. I am not entirely sure because I don't play it up to Titanicus. And obviously these dudes have got the new bases as well, the thinner bases. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, yeah, bases are large. Yeah, I do. I, see, I'm a bit like, do I... Because my whole thing had been Talon, like Deserty Wasteland. But now I'm a bit like, do I just put Deserty Wasteland on top of... What, <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because they're quite I cool mean, bases. Yeah. I mean, Talon wasn't just a desert world, was it? I mean, it would have well, been, no, yeah, no, would have been no. a, in, in some way industrialized in, in some way. Yeah. Shape. Um, I do like them. Yeah. They're, they're, yeah. Uh, so these are the two box sets that are going to be coming out. You've got Titans and you've got uh, a Knight, a Titan Manipal and a, a Knight household, basically. Uh, and these are the models that are going to be in them. And again, I fucking love these models. The tiny Knights look fucking brilliant um they've done a brilliant job of scaling them down and and the titans are basically like if 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 you that any one of those titans could be a full-scale titan and yeah. you know what i mean like the the detail on them is fucking insane paint jobs are uh, amazing as well i suspect these yeah. will be very good value for money because the it tends to be that the boxes like these are always really good value and I believe as well, although I don't think they're coming with the old bases, they are coming with the um I don't know what you call them, the uh the the um like the normal bases, yeah. No, the uh the, the things you use for Adeptus Titanicus, the uh control panel type things. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I yeah. believe they will be in these box sets. Yeah. But I'm sure they said they're not putting the old bases in, so it'll be these new thin bases, not yeah, the adept right. bases. But I could be wrong on that. Don't. So... But you can still use them. I mean, you can use them with Adeptus Titanicus, yeah. even with the thin bases. It just makes yeah. it a bit hard because it's more to do with with angles, isn't it? You need yeah. like your arcs of fire and shit. Um, no, but yeah, sure. these these are wicked, and like you say, hopefully they'll be great value. Mm -hmm. um, and then this is the the night household 
uh, formation. And I'm not really sure how this works. It did kind of mention it. I think you take a banner. So a formation would be like a Questorus Knight banner or a Serestus Knight banner or an Acastus Knight banner. You don't take all of that. You don't take yeah. Questorus, Serestus, and you take you basically pick one and then you can do upgrades. I think that's how it works. I'm not entirely sure. Yeah. It's interesting uh, that basically all the four drop resin kits there are the upgrades. So yeah. the the Morax talents, the Serastus, Knight Atropos. Although again, I'm not familiar enough with the game, but I, I was under the impression that they were resin. But I, I'd imagine that but yeah, I, who knows? But yeah, they are, yeah, they're, they're resin, they're resin models and they're fucking expensive. Um right. and then you can also take armature talents. Right. Uh, in, uh, I'm pretty sure our uh, Forge World resin. Um, but I love this. Uh, I think knights are wicked. So having a fuckload of them running around yeah. uh, the table, I just think is is the most metal thing ever. And yeah, and you can take a Castus, and people won't fucking hate you. Unlike <laughs> Age of Darkness, where if you turn up and put your Castus knight on the table, people just throw up in their hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh and then they went into some more rules i mean i won't read all of these but basically you know titans and knights they'll have uh well titan knights sorry will have ion shields which uh modifies an attacking weapons ap and then you'll have engine killers which does more wounds depending on what you're shooting uh and then it talks about arcs of fire as well um Again, it's just adding some of that Age of Darkness fluff into a smaller scale. Yeah. Uh, and then some examples of the Titan uh, d uh, um, detachment uh, rules. So this I put these up more just to give you an idea of the points cost, really. So mm -hmm. the Warlord Battle Titan is 600 points. So if mm -hmm. you're playing a 3,000-point game, you can fairly easily fit this in uh as an allied allied what uh what was it 30 percent so what's that what uh 900 points is it mm -hmm. i don't know fuck knows uh no, it's not as much you're right. yeah so so that, this just gives you an idea and then you look at the 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 the, the rules for these again five inch movement so they're not moving very fast but they got a two plus save they got six wounds uh and they've got uh, a CAF of plus 14 so you're fucking stamping everything you get into combat with yeah. um, and then you've got the Dire Wolf Heavy Scout Titan on the right uh, which is 385 points for one and these are the ones that they're just releasing in plastic so they did release them in resin and now plastic versions are coming um, and again it talks about these will have Agile and Infiltrate, and you can kind of guess what some of these, you know, Agile, I'd guess they don't get modifiers moving through certain terrain. Infiltrate, they're obviously going to be able to push forward. Uh, so it gives you a bit of an idea with them. And again, they talked about some of the rules. So Titans will have Void Shields. And basically, if your weapon isn't got a modifier of AP minus one, you're doing fuck all against the Void Shields. So you can't just run a load of Marines up to a Titan and shoot the Void Shields out because they're just going to get fucking stamped on. Yeah, interesting. Um, and then you've got Shield Bane Special Rule, which which negates that. Um, so again, you need to start thinking about, is my opponent going to bring a Titan? Do I need to bring stuff that can deal with a Titan? Um, which again is just slightly different to Age of Darkness where you're fucking unlikely to play Titans. You know, it just you might play uh, a game here and there, but I've never played against a Titan at an event. Um, <clears throat> and then terrain. So they they showed this a little while ago. They're bringing out these tiles. These are basically a foot, one foot by one foot. Um, and they kind of hark back a little bit. I can't remember what they're called, but do you remember the uh, the Forge World? Um, Tiles they yeah, the, the Roman battle was your tiles. Yeah, so they kind of remind me a little bit of them. I think these are fucking great. Um, I'd imagine they're probably going to be plastic. 
And the only downside with that is you need to buy a, a bowl for your dice because otherwise your fucking neighbours will be banging on your door. Uh, <laughs> they, uh, yeah. Hey, yeah, oh, yeah. The sound is horrible. Oh, <laughs> if anyone ever used the old uh, the old tables, they are fucking horrendous after a while. It's just cutter, cutter, cutter. Um, I don't know how much these are going to be. You're obviously going to have to buy a few of these to make a five by four table. Um, but I do quite like these. I like the fact that you can you can paint armies to match your table, so the bases would fit in with the table, which I'm a big fan of. If you're doing a campaign or something, um, but yeah, they're cool. And then all the old terrain. That used to be available for Adeptus Titanicus is basically being repackaged and will be coming out again. And I have to say, I think this terrain is fucking brilliant. I really do. Yes. Um, I remember being at one of the greetings from the warp events and they had the AT on next door and I went and had a look at it. And the first thing I noticed was the terrain. It just looks fucking brilliant. Yeah. Um, so this is all coming back. And here's an example of uh the train on the uh new table that they showed uh and then even train has its own rules and again i'm not going to go for all of this but essentially uh you get various saves for the different terrain and then it goes into the structure types and that they can be destroyed basically um and you can fortify ter- so you can move units into terrain so they get cut uh, saves for being in the terrain and whatnot. Um I quite like with the difficult terrain that movement penalty for all models except infantry and walkers. And again, that kind of harks back to that. There's going to be a time and place for infantry, you know, they can move faster through through yeah. smash ruins and stuff, which I think is really cool. Yeah. Um and I think that is about it, really. That is a whistle stop tour of basically all the yep. Warhammer community articles uh, up until this point. Uh, what are your thoughts on all that, Robert? Yeah, so I think it's quite exciting. So it's certainly an exciting uh, time to be alive. I think that just looking at this um, picture, you know, this I think that this probably best encapsulates why we need um uh epic for 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 horror heresy uh just for that scale i think that um what people will be most concerned about i would imagine is around the flavor of your force so you can paint up an army but is every army just going to be basically the same so we know already that legions and the solar auxilia are going to come with uh their own rule and i suppose that it whether there are additional things like rights of war and things like that um and each legion can build a particular force in a particular way to make it more themed i think will be important for people i think that um the terrain is an interesting element so i again the problem i think that one of the adeptus titanicus had was that you needed an awful lot of terrain uh which is a, an awful lot of cost to be able to if you wanted to, a cityscape but there's nothing stopping you from playing with rocks and things like that like we have for our events big 3d printed rocks and then a couple of buildings around dotted around you know will be perfectly good for line of sight booking um so you know that's a that's a cheaper alternative just because gw are putting on all this terrain uh you know you you basically i would imagine would probably need about 500 to 900 pounds to get like a fully uh table that's like fully done five by four you know because that train isn't cheap but there, there are alternatives so consider those before um you, you know thinking oh my god you know this cost is put, putting me off um i think that if you're somebody who does at already um it looked like it looks like these at rules are kind of like slimmed down and dumbed down um yeah. but it's a really good opportunity to, uh, you know, you've got your Titans already, so just add in your Legion force and then you'll have a force good to go. Um, and uh, so I think that's really positive for for 80 players and certainly people who play are in Nordica as well. I think there's loads of positives. I think it's just now about whether it can take off and whether there enough there will be enough support from GW um, to, to make it work. And also from the event scene, 
like we have gone to events where there's but as you say the greens will walk for events Sai has run great adept of titanic uh events will that now just convert into a uk event scene that's now just for for for, horror, for epic horror heresy so it's a really really exciting time um and yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to getting some of these models in the hand. Hopefully they aren't too much of a ball lake to 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 glue together. You know, I really don't want Mark Six Marines that are like multi part <laughs> I just want the Yeah, two no, they um they did show they did show the sprue and they're not. They they basically all come as one. One piece, right, perfect. Um so yeah, so really really cool. And I think that um if you're a modeler, I think that um one of the things I'd say is you, you're not going to get much modeling opportunity from the people <laughs> from the tanks, but you know, look at the Titans because you can do some really cool and interesting stuff from paint schemes and things like that. Um, so that's perhaps where you might get your hobby uh, yeah. enjoyment from, you know, doing, doing those bigger models. I think. Yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent with that statement. I think if you, uh, you can go all out, on one or two titans you know banners chains blah yeah. blah yeah. uh or don't if you don't can't be asked but yeah if you're a modeler that's that's where your your kind of centerpieces are are going to be it um yeah i agree with you I, obviously as we've said i'm mega excited for this my biggest concern is and we talked about this a while ago was for this to be good it needs to work on the mistakes they made with Adeptus yeah. Titanicus, yeah. and yeah. they fucking haven't. Like the build up and the hype for this game was unbelievable. Like I said earlier on, you know, all the fucking Adeptus Titanicus models sold out, all the Aeronautica models sold out. Like people would just like give me fucking tiny dudes, give me epic. And then they were like, oh, yeah, sorry, it's not going to come out in August. I, I mean, yeah, I bet the marketing team were just slamming their heads down on the oh. table. Just being, like, I cannot believe yeah. this happened. Like we, yeah. like we had learned from AT, we built up the hype, you know, da, 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 and then yeah. they're just like because of an error, whatever's that we've come up with yeah. six years yeah. ago. You know, they must be slamming their heads against the tables, just being like, but you basically cut our legs from under us when we're trying to sell this game, you know. Yeah. The... And and I felt it with me, and I'm mega excited, and all of a sudden I was like, Oh, oh yeah. all right. Yeah. Fuck it, I'll leave it for now. Then you know, it's kind of like I've got other things I can be buying. <laughs> like, yeah, well, yeah, that's that's no actually, joke. Yeah, even if you want to be buying stuff, because they're they're re-releasing all these models, they've stopped releasing Adeptus Titanicus models yeah. because they're repackaging it all. Uh, but then that's that's twofold. That people who want to get into Epic can't buy it, but people who are playing Adeptus Titanicus or want to get into Adeptus Titanicus can't buy their fucking models because none of them are available yeah so they've th that is my biggest concern and i don't think it will affect people playing the game because like i say this game's been going on for 20 years without gw support or you know 15 years without gw support so people will keep playing it whether it's supported by them or not my fear is that their sales have been massively hit by this because, like we said, people are just building their own stuff now. People are 3D printing armies, uh, yeah. you know, and, and their people, like, okay, some of them would have just done it anyways, but I imagine a lot of these people would have brought the GW stuff, but they just want it. They just want it because it's yeah. it's the, the hype at the minute. They want it. And because of whatever error, they're not getting it. So they'll go somewhere else to get it because fucking why wouldn't you? So... Yeah. That is probably my biggest concern, and also how they're gonna how they're gonna release it. Because obviously, previously they were gonna release the box set, and then you get your first wave and your second wave, blah blah blah, like they've done with Age of Darkness. Well, are they just are they just gonna release everything now? Like we know it's there. Are you gonna release all the support? Units? I, I, sus I suspect not, because I, I mean that from a you you've got to be sitting. Yeah, a marketing team or the team that decides how we release these things have to weigh up. Okay, well, people have limited budgets. They can't buy everything at one time. So, and we drip feed these things out month by month because we we know that people will spend 10% of their 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 expenditure, their you know, their their monthly budgets on um 
uh, on war games. So I think that basically it's just delayed it. I I would it may it may accelerate um, the um, uh, at the timeline, but I think it would be a such a silly move to release everything all in one go. We're basically just like, oh, well, I can't buy everything, so I'm just gonna have to. I'm gonna limit the things I'm gonna buy. The, I guess my counter argument to that is people already have armies. So yeah. there might be people out there going, well, I've, I've 3D printed all the infantry because I'll just get them painted, but I'll wait for, you know, the Leviathan Dreadnoughts to be released. Yeah. And then they don't release them. And then they'll be like, oh, well, fuck it. I'll just, you, you know, it's it's yeah. a difficult one. They've, they've put themselves in a really bad situation. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but I mean, I feel, I absolutely feel sympathy for the marketing team. That, that yeah, have to market and advertise this, and I, I mean, I you know they must be like we had a plan in a, 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 of action, yeah. it was yeah, clear, yeah, yeah. and then we got word that it wouldn't happen. You know, there must be absolutely. I guess the marketing team. I guess we describe it as Warhammer community. I suppose that they would be marketing. I don't know if there's a a team behind that. Um, yeah. But, you know, if you're God, yeah. I, mean, I just feel so I'm sorry for them. You know, whatever's ha- whatever's happened. Um, um, I, I, the problem is, that I think we'll never know. This obviously we gave no. six stories, haven't we? And you know, um, yeah. about how it could happen. But yeah, I, I guess we'll never know. So, I uh, I just hope that we get it soon. I'm I'm hoping for an October release, but without next, knowing next month, yeah. actually what they're doing, we're we're just guessing, aren't we? We're just pissing in the wind. Um, yeah. The last, the last Warhammer community article did say that it's coming soon, but then that's kind of what they've been saying. So, yeah, who knows? Um, but yeah, I cannot fucking wait. I cannot wait to play out big battles uh, using fucking tanks and titans and knights and all that shit. I just, I cannot fucking wait for it. But yeah, my my biggest fear is that they've absolutely fucking just shatter bricks straight from the off. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, well, but I suppose what you're saying is that it will be more of an uphill struggle to sell it to people or convince people to buy it. Like, it's it's, it's going to have an impact on their initial sales, isn't it? Of course it is. Like, it just is. Because like I say, people have just been producing their own stuff now. People, yeah. I mean, not to keep going on about it, but it's going to have an impact on it. And I hope they factor that in when they do their little... I don't know, whatever they do of like, oh, this game system isn't selling as well as it should be, blah, 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 blah. You need to factor in the fact that you absolutely fucked the release on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, and whether that translates into cost, which I doubt it will do, but, you know, you might go, okay, well, we'll put a lower RRP on it because, you know, that I might get people to move away from 3D printing. Yeah. I, I don't think they think like that. Do they? I don't think many companies think. In fact, most companies nowadays are like, oh, well, let's just make it more expensive. Like, we need to make back our losses. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see what happens in the future. Like, there's been, there was a cheeky little comment in one of the community articles about will we get Primarchs? And it was like, wouldn't that be a thing? And mm-hmm. and and how that will be. You know, and, and Legion specific units, they have said that some will be some stuff will be Forge World. Right. Okay. So whether they do like a Forge World uh Primark in the future, like an eight millimeter Primark, which I feel yeah. will be or whether they release it as like a box set, you know, the Iron Warriors, I don't know, whatever, and it comes with a plastic perturabo and a load of siege breakers and you know, whatever. I don't know how they will do that, but it'll be interesting because that's where a lot of the Legion flavor comes from. Is is its actual? Yeah, the, I mean the, the equipment and the um. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, okay, that's uh. Yeah, lo- loads of food for thought there. Thanks so much for um taking us through that, Lee. That's absolutely brilliant. Uh, so if you've got any thoughts about uh Epic Thirty K, let us know uh in the comments below. Are you excited? Do you agree with Lee that they've basically fucked uh? Fuck the release on it. Do you think this will drive more people to 3D printing? Do you think that people will have gone to 3D printing anyway? Are people just waiting for the models to drop so they can rescale what they've got correctly in terms of 3D printing? Um, you know, and do you think that um this is a dumbed down? I suppose the other question, is it a dumbed down version of Adeptus Titanicus? Will you see people stick with AT? in the format it used to be because it seems to be now no longer supported in the way that it used to be um or do you think that 
people are happy to make this move towards uh, this game system. So loads of questions, loads of question marks. So let us know what you think in the in in the comments below. Um, so yeah, right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, get to the end. So um, we've talked about it a little bit. We uh, of course uh, have a Patreon uh, for Heresy Hammer. We have uh, 172, I think, at last count uh, patrons at the moment at all levels, um, and um, we want to thank you guys. But the particular people we really want to thank are our top level patrons, uh, who uh, who are absolutely amazing. And at the end of every show, uh, get their names read out. So here we go: uh, Thomas Silverstrin, John McArdle, Gore Crow, Ben Ide, Ben Robinson, Tom Hayward. Richard Willis, Mike Dorset, Wolf, Patrick Greenstreet, Bradley Schlutz, Edgar Pavlovsky, Thomas Lake, Randy Overland, uh, Al, Pete Day, Ashley Bowley, Thomas Clark, Peter King, Simon Whitehouse, Chthonic Water Beast, Richard Harris, Hammer and Nails, K, okay, Tom Spear. Tom, I will mention, uh, was uh, one of our console. Um, uh, mm. this month, draw this month um, and we've actually changed it slightly so you can either have a console painted by one of the team console of your choice or a hundred pound uh, voucher for a store of your choice and Tom in fact went with the voucher so Lee dodged a bullet this uh, <laughs> dodged a bullet uh, this <laughs> uh, not done it yet so um, that is uh, just that is our centurion level five pound a month and every four months you get entered into a draw as long as you've been part of our uh patreon for four months um so you get a chance to win a painting console or a hundred pound voucher so you can easily make back the money you put into uh into harris hammer anyway uh alex robinson uh kerry love dale barrett uh mark kingsworth julian chris levitt saigon sadler that guy loves it, james apostate terrain uh who's just had a sold out event uh recently well done james it's sold out i think in, in minutes so well done for that andrew g nicholas Strax, kevin Abramo, uh, James McAvoy, Craig the Celt, WH back plans. Uh, I've just sent, I, in fact, he was the lot. In fact, that I sent that all the way to, uh, I think it was Thailand. I think he lives. Uh, mm. and I sent um, his miniature for him for this month. He was the last one to be sent out this month and it's gone all the way to Thailand. Uh, oh. no, it wasn't Thailand, it was uh, Taiwan. That's where it was. So we went all the way to him in Taiwan. Uh, Clayton, uh, Unruh. Callum Falcus, Big T's painting, Ethel Brill, Keon Tez, George, Matt Fuller, Unexplained Miniatures, Mark Gallagher, Lewis Hibbins, uh, Legion Minis, Jack Stilwell, Gareth Morris, Stephen Daniel, Andy Dudley, Tyrannis, Isaac Halstead, Benjamin Olengaka, Jared Cope, Alex Freeman. Oh, God, we've got so many. Uh, Alistair Croxon, Alerpy Wargaming, Henrik Rasmussen, Joe, Peter Jan Van uh, Flinty, Ben42, Harley Man, Chris Keith, Eric Brennan, Charlie Hawkins, TSC Paints, Andrew Gomez, Adria, uh, Adria Arcos, John Hathaway, Edwin Barnett, Leon Haynes, Blake or Stiff, Jace Constable. Thank you, you guys. You are our top level Patreons. Thank you. And we really appreciate the support. And over to our last sponsors, just to see how the show. Uh, Kurt Games excellent game store make sure that you purchase all your uh accessories from those guys as well as grip you can you can purchase there purchase there wherever you want to be especially if you're local uh but i know they run some absolutely awesome events at Kurt games uh so make sure you check them out our next one is Oops, sorry sorry right. beowulf finish printing uh, so they do some amazing stuff amazing stuff for horace heresy i've recently just been uh just bought some um <laughs> Uh, bits for some apothecaries off of them. Uh, so make sure you check out those guys. Give them a message if you can't find something on their website. I'm sure they'll be able to sort you out. And finally, we have uh, Dan. Dan is a, I guess, a bespoke uh, printing uh, expert. Um, and he's just done uh, a ton of our first wave of our uh, miniature for uh, Heresy Hammer. So thanks ever so much uh, to Dan for those, because I think everyone has been, all 14 people this month have been really pleased with the prints that they have received from him. So well done. And make sure you go check out Dan as well and follow him on all his social media stuff. And that, I think, is it. So make sure you use hashtag Heresy Hammer. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share. If you are watching this video for the first time uh, because you are uh, epic... Uh, curious and you don't aren't really into Horace Heresy, welcome, welcome, welcome. Make sure you uh, subscribe so you don't miss any of our videos because I'm sure we are likely to do lots more uh, Legions Imperialis in the uh, future. If you've got a list you want us to share, then heresyhammer30k at gmail.com. I know lots of you are getting contact about John's event um, 
uh, in coming in the next couple of weeks. If you've got questions about that, direct them to him or give us an email and we will send them to uh, send them to John. And then finally, also our Patreon. If you want to go check it out, go check out by clicking the link below or just typing into Google. Basically have a Patreon and you can become part of our ever-growing community and you guys allow us to continue with all the stuff we do with the channel as well uh so that's goodbye from me ciao goodbye from lee and we shall see you on the next one take care guys see you soon